What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Francis Ngannou versus Anthony Joshua live stream. I am just now tuning in. I've not been watching any of the fights so far. I'm guessing that we've already seen Zhang versus Parker. Oh, what do you know? Anthony Joshua arriving only 30 minutes before their so-called start time. I see him walking out. If this were a UFC event, he would have already been warming up. He would have had his hands wrapped. He would have had his gloves on. He would have been all ready to go. But boxing is wasting our fucking time. As usual, the start time for the main event. Again, they say five. Let's see when it actually starts. Oh, Zhang versus Parker didn't actually take place? Wow, that is absolutely pathetic. That's a joke. By the way, I did tune in to some of the prelims. I tuned in for like two minutes of this Fury guy. One of Tyson Fury's cousins or something. And dude... I don't think that I've ever seen such a low-level fight in a professional setting, really. It, it was worse than what I would see on street beefs. It was disgusting. The fact that that Fury guy has been boxing for a long time and he looks like that is a joke. It's a joke, okay? I, I would outbox him. I would outbox him. Does that mean I'd beat him? Probably not, but I would outbox him. I don't even box. <laughs> Lucas already making excuses for Benoit St. Denise. I'm not making excuses. I'm still picking him to win. I am still picking him. If something weird happens and he craps his pants, then it's different. No one ever craps their pants in the octagon. If he has staff and he gasses out in the first round, then it's different. I don't think he has staff right now. I don't think he has staff right now, but he might be recovering from it. Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. What are they doing? We don't need 40 different interviews from 40 different groups of guys. Hurry up. Pathetic. Why, there, there's so much dead time at these boxing events. It's a circus act. Look at this guy. I know this, this guy with the brown suit on. He's always doing his thing. The milk dud head. He's always at these boxing events. I don't know who the other two guys are right now, but what is going on? Why don't they have Zhang and Parker in the cage? Wait, who is this guy? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. I thought it's Zhang versus Parker, no? It's Zhang versus someone else. Wait, are there three more fights? Are there three more? Four more fights? Honestly, this 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 just pisses me off. Boxing pisses me off so much, dude. Five? No, dude, you got to be joking. There's only three more, but I hate boxing. I hate boxing so much with all my heart. I hate boxing. It's a joke. Disgusting. Look at this guy. Look at he's he's in his outfit. He's waiting to walk out. They're wasting his time. Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou doing fifty interviews in the back. Disgusting. Yusik and, ja and, and uh, Fury is not the biggest heavyweight fight in the century. Not even close. Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. I'm sorry, would be a bigger fight, right? Fury versus Joshua, two Brits. My goodness, man. Another stupid ad. Before that, we've got Haney versus Garcia. We'll waste your time for four hours before the main event. Fuck you. Dude, these box, these freaking British boxing heads. <laughs> these British boxing old heads. Oh, no, it's the millennials, man. It's these millennials that are, that are running the production. The circus act millennials. They don't know how it is. Millennials are outdated at this point. We need some Gen Z people running the show. Yeah. What's your prediction? Francis Ngannou by KO. That is my official prediction. I'm looking forward to seeing how this Zhang guy looks because I'm going to be a, a very critical judge. You guys know me. You guys know me when it comes to boxing. I know my shit. I'm incredibly critical. Now, you may think that I speak out of bounds sometimes when I'm breaking down MMA. Just wait until you see me watch Zhang versus Parker. People are hyping up Zhang. Dude, no. Zhang would kill Ngannou, man. Yeah. I can't wait to rage at that.
in my post fight video and scream at the top of my lungs. <laughs> Show us that jab. I got a good jab, man. I got a crafty jab, man. I got a nice jab, bro. I got a nice jab, but I can't really show it if I'm not standing up and I, I'm not actually like, you know, out of the chair. A judge with no boxing knowledge. Yeah, but I actually do have boxing knowledge. So I disagree. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we are. They're announcing two guys coming out. 15 round fights. Not real fighting. It's not real fighting. Boxing is just not as serious as it used to be. They're getting in the cage and you're just throwing hands at someone with these big padded gloves. If they were serious, they would at least do it in small gloves. What's up with the big padded gloves, man? That's too old school. It's outdated. Who is this guy? Let me guess. Is this the can that they're feeding to the guy that's actually good? He is not even walking out with his team. He's walking out alone. Oh, no. Are they all walking out alone? Nick Ball. I guarantee 19 and 0. Wow. I guarantee you he's fought a bunch of plumbers. Where do they even get these guys that, that they're beating? Who are the guys that they're beating? You, you, you'd you expect everyone at 19 and 0 to be a killer. You're a boxing casual? Yeah, for good reasons. I'm a good, I'm a, I'm a real boxing fan. I'm not a fan of what it is today. The state of boxing today is a disgrace. Look at all the dead time on air, the way that they promote these fights. There's no atmosphere in the crowd at all. It's a circus act. And then they get in the cage with these big padded gloves on and they have boring ass 12 round fights where they're landing like six punches around. The heavyweights are worse than the freaking tough heavyweights you see that fail to make it into the UFC. Boxing is a joke. Boxing's a joke, man. With the real boxing, you want real boxing? Go to a gym. Go to a boxing gym. You you'll get sorted out. You want some real boxing? Professional boxing is a joke. It's like it's like NFL NBA versus college football, college basketball. You want real football? Go watch some college football. Those guys know how to run the ball. They know how to make plays. It's not all about the ego, right? They're comfortable in the NBA. They're comfortable. That's how it is. I like what this guy's wearing, though. He's got Mary. <laughs> He's got Mary on his shirt. He's walking out with the cross. Nice. I don't know who this guy is, but I like the music he's walking out to. He's got, is that Pacquiao? He's got Pacquiao with him too? I like Ray Vargas. Ray Vargas is a real boxer. He's a real boxer. Your streams help my, okay. Dude, if, if that's actually the, the truth, then I, I you know, I, I wish you the best of luck, man. Stay on the grind. And um, you gotta, you know, listen, I'm, I'm not here to give a lot of advice, but I'm happy that my, content can help you out i'm not, i'm happy that my content can help you out brother thank you for the 25 and okay you think anthony joshua drops francis no i, I can't predict that he'll drop francis stipe didn't drop francis daniel cormier didn't drop francis Derek lewis didn't drop francis i know dc didn't fight francis but i've seen francis take big shots and elbows from tyson fury i've seen him take Flush punches from a knockout artist in Stipe Miocic. Say what you want about Stipe. I know he's not as big and he's not as much of like a physical presence as Anthony Joshua. But dude, Stipe's hitting you with four ounce gloves. He's knocked a lot of people out like that. Stipe is big power. Francis ate those shots like it was nothing. And Stipe landed a, a flush shot on Francis when Francis was rushing in in the rematch. Stung him a little bit, but they sting him. They don't rock him. Yeah, and Ganu has a cylinder blockhead. I like how Pacquiao is with this guy. I was watching some Maidana highlights. I don't know why. I used to... Maidana looks so Filipino, does he not? I know he's from South America, but... I was watching some Maidana versus Floyd Mayweather highlights. I was watching both of those fights. I remember the Maidana first fight and rematch. Boxing back in the day was a whole lot better. Is he actually Filipino? No way. Was he actually? So I'm right. No, he's born in Argentina, homie. Ooh, racism just by bringing up someone's ethnicity. 
Thank you for the $17.99. The only thing keeping boxing alive is the Saudi oil princess spending gallons and gallons of oil. You think it's that? You think it's, yeah, I mean, these guys love boxing. It's good that they're making fights that we want to see. I love that. I love that. But, I mean, Roberto Colon, Roberto Duran, Marty Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, the Brownsville Yeti. This is real boxing back in the day. Rocky Marciano, two-foot big Silva. The little little Ireland. Little remember little Ireland from the 50s? Little Ireland? He was smoking everybody. <laughs> Marty Lou. Marty Lou was was mopping fools up. I remember those guys, man. That, that was the high day. Now we have Nick Ball, who's an influencer boxer. 19 and 0, but he's never stepped foot in a boxing gym, dude. These guys are in the pristine gyms. You want to know boxing? As I said, go to a gym in Philly. Go to a boxing gym in Philly. You'll find out what real boxing is right away. That's where the best guys in the world are. They just don't get their crack. They don't get their shot. <laughs> they don't get their shot. How do you even watch this? Where do you find it? I'm watching it on DAZN, and I did buy the pay-per-view. I was expecting I was going to be late. I was rushing to get home. I, I went to the gym. I stopped at the store. I was rushing to get home. I was like, shit, like, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. Everyone's, you know, going to be talking about Zhang and Parker. I'm going to, I can't believe I missed it. And we're not even there yet. Ray Vargas. Let's hope he has a good performance. 36 and one. I respect that. Thank you for the five CHF. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Avni. What's up, little bro. Can't wait to see you witness Benoit St. Denise getting smoked tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. I'm less worried about him as the, the week goes on. Seeing him on the skills hyped up. With energy, I'm more confident now. I'm, I'm not as worried. Someone Paulo. Hey, Paulo. Someone Donald. It's my favorite reporter right now. Man, those reporters from the press conference were trash. That's why I need to take over the UFC to fix this stuff. Yo, what's up? What's good? How are you doing? Leonardo, what's good? UFC 300 Q&A was funny as hell. Really? I know it was a weird lineup. Pereira, Armand, and I forget her name, Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison is pretty entertaining. You know, I don't, I'm not a fan of her. She's cringy. I don't really watch her interviews, but I'm, you know, if there's any WMMA fighter to, to give any moments, it's probably Kayla Harrison. She's going to talk shit. Hey, Lucas, I'm a big fan from India. Who you got, AJ or Francis? I'm going with Francis and Ganu by KO. I know he's not the better boxer, but I, I do think he'll be the, I think he'll he'll be good enough to land the right shots. Here we go, round one. All right, let's try to let's try to watch some real boxing, dude. This guy Ball is tiny. He's got a big back, but he's just a little bit small. This is ridiculous. This is a clown show. My goodness, this is a clown show. This guy reminds me of that midget from one fc question for jeff neil question for jeff neil jeff what do you think about this fight week man <laughs> oh man you know think it's a good fight week man i think it's a good fight week man i'm excited to put, put on a show and uh yeah man thank you jeff and question for you and gary what do you make about the limelight fuck you <laughs> I can't wish. Oh man, I would love to to look these reporters in the eye, grab them by the shoulders, and really just ask them why they're asking such dumb, horrible, brain dead questions. Shake them up by the shoulders. My goodness, dude, get a grip of yourself. I honestly, you know what it is. I don't even think it's because they don't want to ask tough questions because they want to be with a good they want to have a good relationship with the fighters they want to be cool when they pass them in the hallways i actually just think it's because they're dumb they're really stupid and that's pretty much it if you were smart you wouldn't ask a horrible question like that at a fucking press conference dude fuck all those reporters asking the dumbest questions ever that we've heard the answer to a million times seriously a monkey could do their job literally 
a, a, a monkey could have three choices as to which question to ask, all generic questions, and just randomly select one of them. They'll ask the same questions every time. How's it feel to be in Miami, man? Oh, oh, oh. No, motherfuckers. That's not what I'm saying. That's no, oh, that's you. That's you guys that are saying that. I'm not saying that at all. You guys are the ones that thought about that. So what does that say? So I bring up I bring up the word monkey, and that's where your head goes. Okay. Uh how many fights until the main event? Oh, nice body shot from Vargas. That's real boxing right there, man. How many fights? There's two more, but we're underway with the feature fight. I guarantee you there's going to be 30 minutes of dead time in between the feature fight and the co-main event. Let's hope not. Let's hope this ends in a KO. Let's hope Nick Ball just takes a dive and gets KO'd stiff. You know, if you have Nick Ball's build, like, you're just never going to be a champ. I'm sorry, man. On honestly, I take that back because Gervonta Davis is a champ and he's the best boxer and he's, you know... I don't know. I don't think he has a long reach. What is Gervonta Davis's reach? Gervonta Davis reach. 67. That's not that great. The Okay. The Grand Wizard White Hooded Drew Dober is ready. Is he? Thank you for the 2CHF. He's not fighting on this card. Uh, thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. You don't know shit about real boxing. Wasn't there for Ali and Frazier. I knew all about Frazier's hook. I knew all about Frazier's hook. I knew all about Frazier's moves. I know all about his footwork. I know about his beef with Muhammad Ali. And it was a really rough time for Joe Frazier. Because I remember, you know, because obviously I was, uh, I was around Marty Lewis when I was growing up. Marty Lewis and Joe Frazier were best buddies. They'd never fought each other. It was like Usman and Adesanya. But they were actually friends. They were actually friends. The photo that I posted on that poll a while ago, where Mah if you look up Muhammad Ali getting into it with Joe Frazier, that is the photo. Of that is a photo of Marty Lewis that you will see. I'll show you guys. But anyway, there's a photo of Marty Lewis getting into it with Joe Frazier outside of Joe Frazier's place, his mansion. But what people don't understand is that was actually Marty Lewis that was getting into it. And Joe Frazier was just backing up his boy. My old head co-workers think Tyson beats Paul. <laughs> I showed him a picture of Mike in a wheelchair. and He's still stuck with his pick. I'm trying to get my money. Thank you for the five bucks. Ben Young, I appreciate that. Benoit St. Denise is not out. Stop. I'll look on Instagram just to make sure because, you know, it doesn't even matter if you bait me into that. Yep, he's not out. Okay. Yep, we don't see anything along those lines. Dude, Jake Paul is probably going to KO Mike Tyson. Or he's just going to... I honestly think it's going to be like a friendly contest, most likely. I hope Mike Tyson sleeps him out cold, but... I mean, yeah, all respect loss for Jake Paul. I thought he was actually working his way up, and obviously he's just working his way down. His fight with his fight with Nate Diaz was tougher than his last fight. Muhammad Ali will be um, not Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson will be tougher than the the taxi driver he took on last time, right? But guess who was tougher than Mike Tyson? Guess who was a tougher matchup? Probably Diaz, who's just tough, and definitely Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva is definitely Jake Paul's hardest fight to date. All right, enough with the RIP Sanhagen bullshit. I saw Sanhagen on the Weighing In show. Not the Weighing In show, but uh, the, the, the Weigh-Ins show. I'm not looking up Sanhagen. You guys are trolling. You guys are literally trolling. No one would, this would never happen. He died after, stop, dude, fuck off. I'm not, I'm literally not looking it up. I'm not looking it up, and you guys will stop saying it in an hour when the joke gets old. You'll stop saying it. No one will be talking about it. We'll be yapping about Francis and Joshua. 
and how much time it's taking for them to walk out. You guys will not talk about Sanhagen. Nope, Sanhagen's good. Oh, okay, Jorge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy's trolling. As soon as he said Jorge ordered a hit on him, I knew he was trolling. If it was real, you wouldn't be saying that, dude. Thank you for Nova Red 103 Gaming. Thank you for joining the Lucas Tracy MMA Club. I appreciate you becoming a part of the club. Members, streams, weekly Q&As. We're going to start doing a, a weekly news update as well. What is this? Weird looking commercial. Slumdog Millionaire MMA. Monkey Man. Interesting. Speaking of, dude, I hope I have time to see Dune 2 today. That's why I'm a little bit upset about how this is uh, going to be starting late. This is probably going to go to a decision like all boring ass boxing fights do. Boxing is a joke of a sport. None of the fights are actually fun unless it's high level. And it's like a Leon Edwards title fight. The only reason why it's entertaining is because it's a title fight and the stakes are high. But we'll most likely be done with the main event by like 7 p.m. And then I'll have to do a video. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, don't mind doing a video. It's just. You know, they advertise this as the main event starting at five. We're not even close. Prime Yoel or Prime Wanderlei? Yoel. Wanderlei has zero chance at all. He would never stand a chance to beat Yoel Romero. Okay. Thank you for the 25 and okay. Speaking of Wanderlei, I found out he's like one of the wealthiest MMA fighters ever. We're talking top five. I looked up the wealthiest MMA fighters. He was He was on that list. He's got like 20 mil. Which is pretty interesting. Wanderlei is killing it. He's killing it, man. But Yoel Romero would have knocked his ass out. Roy Jones is tougher for Jake Paul. Yes, but it's just a joke to be fighting guys that are that old. That, that's like fighting Matt Hughes. It's like fighting Mark Coleman. It's like fighting Boss Rutten at this point. It's just a total fucking joke. Okay. It's it's honestly like O'Malley just fighting. The first bantamweights in MMA history right now. Even though Malley's not as good as Jake Paul. Jake Paul's obviously reached a higher peak in boxing than O'Malley has in MMA right now. But um, at the same time, you get my point, okay? O'Malley would still have a slight edge. But, you know, nice body shots there. It's one thing It's one thing for Jake Paul to, to call out to Canelo, and it's like, all right, he's got a decent chance to be Canelo. But, you know, imagine if O'Malley's calling out. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, what is bro yapping about? I'm literally yapping right now. Cheeto did not look good on the skill. I'll tell you that. I know, but it doesn't matter. People look rough on the skills all the time, and they end up winning. All right, Charles looked like death on the skill when he fought Benil. All right, Charles looked bad on the skill a few times in the title fights that he actually won. He'll be all right. Who wins, Parker or Zhang? Probably Parker. I think Zhang is overrated. He's beat a bunch of bums. At least Parker's beat Deontay Wilder, who is not that skilled, but just has tons of power anyway. So it's a good win. Volka stepping in for Joshua. Okay, thank you for the $2. Can we just get a nice flop? Can one of these guys just take a dive? All right. We don't need to see this. My goodness, man. This fight sucks. How could you be a fan of boxing? Honestly, I don't get it. How could you be a fan of this sport? It's like kids' taekwondo competitions were, or, or like modern day Olympic taekwondo, where you're not allowed to kick the head you're not allowed to knock people down that's basically boxing it's not a real fight they're hogging they got they got the big pillow gloves on they're wearing shoes like come on this is pathetic what is this people actually consider this fighting like yeah man it is tough i'm not gonna lie it's gritty but my goodness how about you just wear four ounce gloves i'm telling you if they wore four ounce gloves boxing would be saved there'd be way more ko's There'd be way better fights. Boxing would be saved with four ounce gloves. Thank you for the 25 and okay, or just six ounce gloves. It's like the 12 ounce gloves, it ruins it. 
They got two hands like me. Oh. I'm going to do a Yoel Romero real impression, okay? I'm going to do a real Yoel impression when I make my documentary. Not a, I keep saying documentary. It's not going to be a documentary. It's going to be a short film. I already have my Thembo Godimbo segment planned, but I, I need to find footage of, you know, you know, I got to find footage of an African guy talking on the phone, slamming it down, wearing business attire. I, I got to find footage of, I don't know, someone looking like Thembo cruising down Miami in a nice sports car as well. So I, I have to find a lot of this footage, man. For this video that I'm planning, but I do believe this will get over a million views. The one that I'm planning out, it's going to do really well. When is the main event? It's not on for a while. When is the Marty Lewis documentary dropping? It's probably going to come out in about a year, but we're still working on that. We, we have conducted a couple of interviews so far. Lucas, at first I thought you were fighting Vargas. <laughs> you thought that was me? I would smoke ball, dude. I would smoke this man. Has he fought yet? No, Magumbo has not fought. Thank you for the $2. How do you think O'Malley matches up to Teporia? Um, I don't think he beats Teporia. I don't think he has a chance. He has a, a fluky chance to beat Teporia. What's he going to do? Chin Teporia? He might, but it's... I mean, come on, dude. Like, I don't think Teporia is overextending. And it's usually only when people overextend. I don't think Deporia would get hurt by O'Malley, and I think he could take him down easily. I think a few leg kicks from Deporia would crush O'Malley's leg. Look at how often Deporia kicks people and they spin around. O'Malley gets hit once by him. He's probably fighting skittish for the rest of it. So Deporia beats O'Malley. Also, O'Malley won't share the same reach and range advantage. He'll have a little bit of a height advantage, but... Tapori is a featherweight. He's not got T-Rex arms. Doesn't have the longest arms. Magumbo is not Natty. I don't know who you're referring to, but uh, are you talking about who? Francis? Thank you for the $2. Yes, he is. Francis is natural, buddy. Actually, he might not be, but I do believe that it's possible to be natural if you look like Nganu. It is possible. It is possible. But he could be on sauce like everyone else, okay? Oh, a hair transplant means he's not natural? That doesn't mean he's not natty. Man, this is so boring. I can't keep listening to this. Goodness gracious, man. Thank you for the $2 money fund. I appreciate that. I didn't know the fight was today. Almeida is natural. Almeida is not natural. I, I couldn't be more confident. Also, I didn't know this until recently. I, I assumed that he had started at a much lighter weight class, but he started his career as a welterweight. That's like Rumble Johnson, right? He used to fight at welterweight. But the thing is, when Rumble was at heavyweight, he was much fatter than Almeida. Almeida's lean at heavyweight, right? And Almeida wasn't like going on these deathly weight cuts to get down to welterweight. He was like, you know, he was a big welterweight, but he wasn't killing himself to get down there. So yeah, Almeida's definitely on shit. Why are you drinking soy sauce? This is just coffee. Thank you for the $2, Evan Mass. Cheeto is a nightmare matchup for Sean, cardio-wise. Oh, I really hope Cheeto wins, man. I really like Cheeto, man. He's, he's an inspiration, honestly. Cheeto is one of the most inspirational fighters in the UFC. I don't find O'Malley inspiring. Not anymore, at least. Not anymore. Listen, there are some qualities about him that are inspiring. Right? Self-belief, that's really inspiring, 100%. His style is fun to watch. I get it. But listen, I know that O'Malley's worked hard. I totally get that. But Cheeto's not as talented as O'Malley. We, we all know it. Okay? Now, Cheeto, his durability is a gift from God, 100%. That is, in some way, a talent. You look at someone like Cheeto, that's a guy that has to claw their way to the top, right? He has so many pushbacks throughout his career, right? He grew up in a, in a... I don't know if he grew up in poverty, actually, but he definitely didn't grow up, like, uh, you know, well. He definitely did not grow up well. A small little town in Ecuador, farm town in Ecuador, Definitely a rough area. He says he used to get into tons of fights. And, uh, you know, he's, 
He has, has a kid with a disability. He was broke getting into the UFC. All he wanted to do was make enough money to make her smile, bro. Cheeto is a freaking inspiration, man. How can you not love Cheeto and root for him in this one? Whereas O'Malley, O'Malley's just repping degeneracy, honestly, at this point. <sighs> Cheeto will catch Sean later in the fight. What time is the fight? I don't know. It's going to be at around 6, even though they said the main event's going to start at 5, which is annoying. Yeah, Cheeto's a great man. His kid his kid does not have Downs. His kid has uh, Mobius syndrome, which honestly, I didn't know a lot about it. I, I looked it up today a little bit. Um, you can have regular intelligence. You can have normal intelligence with Mobius syndrome. It's not like down. It just changes the the, the the your ability to move your face around. Morbius, Morbius, sorry, Morbius syndrome. But yeah, all it does is it affects your ability to move your facial muscles. But you can talk. You can have regular intelligence. It's nowhere near as bad as Downs. I was not making a. I just said it incorrectly. Uh, Cheeto with his family on countdown and embedded won me over him and his wife are a dream couple too, bro. I, I was almost, I was almost getting teary eyed. <laughs> I was almost getting teary eyed watching, you know, his the, the ESPN posted something on, on him, his wife and his daughter today. There were onion. People were cutting onions around me, man. I was not crying. I was not crying, but I got teary eyed. Always got to reel yourself back. Of course, always got to reel yourself back. Because of course it, it is a little bit of a choice. I didn't I did not cry. I did not cry. But I'm saying it, it all it, it it you know watered up my eyes. I ain't joking. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story, man. Is it normal? Uh, it's normal to cry when something. Yes, it is. But but actually doing it, you know, it's just uh, you don't need to do it. It's just a little bit too much. You don't need to do it. Unless you know the only time where. For me, I'd be comfortable to do it as if there's like, you know, a loss of a loved one, something like that. Or if you win the belt, all right, if you win the belt, you, you do something incredible in your life. You achieve your dreams that you've been working hard towards for like 10, 15 years. Um, in your last video on sauce on roids in the UFC, why on God's green earth? Hold on. Why on God's green earth? Did you literally confirm roid cheats below suspected roid users? Crazy fam love, though. Thank you. I appreciate the five bucks. I don't really understand what you mean. Why on God's green earth did you literally confirm, have confirmed roid cheats below suspected roid users? Well, because I just wanted to do an S tier for the guys that are the most sauced or the most obviously sauced that aren't necessary. Like, for example... Jilton Almeida has not been a confirmed roid cheat, but he's more sauced up than O'Malley. I think we can agree with that. So he's going to be in the S tier. O'Malley at some point was a confirmed roid cheat. He might not be on anything right now, and he's a little pipsqueak. So he's not as sauced up. So that, that's kind of the way that I was thinking. Same thing with Jones. You know, Jones in his latter half of his career did not look sauced up in his Tiago Santos fight, his Reyes fight. He, he looked like a hobbly wobbly man. But then you look at Adesanya showing up with a boob. I couldn't put him in the confirmed tier and I couldn't put him in the high suspicion tier just because you know Izzy's on that shit. So the S tier was just for people you know are on stuff but haven't been popped. But it's it's likely that everyone's on a little bit of stuff, you know. What time does it start? It was supposed to start at 5 and the feature fight is on. Vargas and Ball. I was getting worried that I was going to miss the walkouts. I was like, dude, I at least want to see Francis and Joshua walk out. And I turn this shit on. I find out this fight hasn't even happened yet. This freaking feature fight. So it's going to be a long time. This fight sucks. It's a joke. It's a joke. No one knows who this ball guy is. Vargas, I'm sure, is somebody. But look, he's gassing out now. I guarantee you. Who, what weight class? They don't even say the weight class. That's another issue with this. They don't even say what weight class it is. Pathetic. You couldn't have that on the screen? You're that lazy? The zone? My goodness. We don't know anything about these guys.
Thank you for the $2. Watched Dune 2 and IMAX again 10 times better than the first. 10 times better? Holy shit. I can't wait to see it then. I cannot wait. Tyson Fury in the crowd. He would kick Francis's ass, man. I know a Fran everyone was glazing Francis for going at Tyson, for example, saying the only thing protecting you is the fact that we're in a boxing rule set. It's like, Tyson Fury fucking elbowed your face. He would mess you up in a real fight. He's got the reach advantage. He's got the range advantage. He can leg kick you at range. For sure, I could see Francis maybe take down Tyson, but he's not much of a wrestler, and he couldn't submit Gon, who's horrible on the ground. Gon got submitted by John Jones in like the first three minutes. So what? what's Francis going to do? Breathe on him heavily? I'd honestly go with Tyson Fury. And honestly, with low kicks, I think he could slow Francis down even more and have an even better chance at knocking him out if he has the ability to kick at range. So there's that. It's just annoying when people glaze Francis. Oh, oh, Francis is the best. Like, he wasn't even the champion. He didn't even beat Gon. He had a good win over Stipe. He was a one-hit wonder. Thank you for the five bucks. O'Malley is a gay homosexual. And answer my last question, damn it. Okay, I'll answer your last question. Um, I don't think he is, but what's your last question? Lucas, real question, can I invest in the channel? What do you, like, you are investing in the channel right now by donating. That is technically investing in the channel. Uh, this is not like a public company. You, you know, you can't you can't buy it like you, you could a stock or something like that. But uh, yeah, thank you for the five dollars. I can't wait to watch Dune 2, Vafa B. Thank you for the two dollars. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. We still have a three hour concert for the main event. Yep, that's true. Thank you for the seven ninety nine Australian dollars, Kobe Stimson. There's Tyson. Tyson Fury, baddest man on the planet. There's the guy. There's the man. There's the king of Saudi. King of Saudi Arabia in the building. Lucas, you still owe the fans a 24-hour gooning stream. No, I do not. Okay. Everyone finally jumping on the Dune train. I know, dude. Like, I watched the first movie a couple days ago, and it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I can't imagine how good the second one is. Did you pay for the pay-per-view? Yes. It's only 39 bucks, which compared to the UFC ones is not that bad. And it is what it is, man. It is what it is. I don't mind supporting this. Your video about O'Malley's charisma always makes me laugh out loud. I made one myself on TikTok and it did pretty well. Thank you for the five bucks, T-Ball Paul. You are one of the best TikTokers. I don't know if you post on YouTube, but you should post stuff on YouTube. I think that that style of... Uh, you know, content will work. I really do think it would work. So thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Try your hand at YouTube. Thank you for the $2. I want equity. Thank you for the $2 money fund. Thank you for investing in the channel. I appreciate that. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. The donating is, is basically as good as it gets. Same shirt. Actually, I'm not I'm not rocking the Shamil Gaziev shirt. I had to wash that, dude. I had to wash that one. Those get smelly quickly. Cause it was actually made in, in Shamil Blob Gaziev's backyard. And you know, they're a smelly bunch, man. Uh, thank you. I'm just joking. Darren Till mauled and sub Tyson. Francis would kill him. Darren Till was training Tyson Fury in a soft environment, a comfortable setting just to teach him lessons. But Tyson Fury was not fighting against him. He wasn't really putting up a fight. It's it's like one of those situations where you go to a gym for the first time, you spar with someone the first time, you're not trying against, you're just feeling them out. You're letting them know, yo, 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 it's going to be all good. And I think that that's what Tyson Fury is doing with Darren Till. Darren Till would not actually submit Tyson Fury in a real fight. Tyson Fury is way bigger than him. He's way longer than him. He's got the Sean Woodson takedown defense, most likely. Thank you for the $5, Andrew Duke. Thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. Keep it up. I will. Thank you. FedEx shirt. <laughs> I should actually get one. Almeida looks like a roided up gator. He, he actually does. He looks like an alligator. That is a really good comparison. You're right. MMA Joey wouldn't have a take this bad 
He defends who? And he, oh, I see what you mean. Um, what is my take that's bad? That Tyson Fury beats up Ngannou? He literally has like a eight inch reach advantage. He literally beat Francis Ngannou in a boxing match where Francis is, is allowed to only strike where there's no takedowns, there's no leg kicks, there's no elbows. Imagine what uh, Tyson landed an elbow on accident. Imagine what he would do if he was actually trying to set one up. Imagine the work of Tyson in the clinch. Imagine the knees for Mike Tyson in the clinch. He's got the long, wiry knees. I think he beats Francis Ngannou in an MMA fight. I think he's the baddest man on the planet. UFC ceremonials alive. Yes, I'll tune in. I'll tune in. Looking forward to these stare-downs. Anyway. Oh, here comes Marina Moros. Wow. Here we go. He's the baddest man on the planet. That's why he got knocked down. One knockdown does not win you a fight. Also, when Francis is only allowed to strike, he's the most dangerous man on the planet, which is why I'm picking him against Anthony Joshua. He's obviously the most dangerous guy on the feet. When you, he's only like the what's the worst conditions to fight Francis? You have to throw hands with him. Who the fuck would want to throw hands with him? At least when Gon fought him, Gon was able to kick. Gon was able to kick at range. Gon even took him down. And we know Gon's grappling is terrible because of the the uh, John Jones fight. And we know that John Jones is not the best grappler because of the Dominic Reyes fight and the Tiago Santos fight where he couldn't really take them down. So you had to decline John Jones, take down Anthony Joshua. <laughs> not Anthony Joshua, Cyril Gon. Uh, and sub him in the first. But Gon took down Nganu and he beat Nganu. So what do you think Francis would do to a guy that obviously would... Like, I'm just telling you, the range would be an issue for him. Short guys teeing off. <laughs> Let's see. Here comes Asuma Almabayev. Looking forward to the 27 national anthems. I am too. I am too. Saudi Arabia one, the British one. They'll probably do a Cameroonian one. Asu Al Mabayev is walking out right now. Damn. Ball is imposing his will right now. This fight is heating up. It's just, you know, by the time a boxing fight actually heats up, it's the fifth round and we've already lost our patience and we're moving on to something else. Boxing is actually ass. I know. It's a joke at this point. The way to fix the sport for real would be to just make everyone wear four or five ounce gloves. Doesn't have to be four ounce gloves, six ounce gloves. Make the gloves smaller. Do MMA style gloves or curved MMA style gloves. The Onyx ones that Joe Rogan always goes crazy about. Do that so they can't eye poke each other. The sport is saved. People will actually watch. The fights will be better. They'll hit each other more often. And there will be more knockdowns, probably more KOs. It might even be safer with more KOs. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it's the repeated knockdowns and the repeated head strikes, just a little bit of extra cushion to allow them to stay standing that really messes them up. Here's Josh Parisian. Josh Parisian's walking out. Here comes Rebellis. Let's see. Dude, I feel bad for Josh Parisian. I think he honestly got threatened by the UFC. They said that they were going to cut him. At least that's what someone told me. It could be bullshit, but I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. Guru just walked out. No, I do not want the Blob to fight to Spain. I'm a fan of the Blob, but I'm not delusional. All right? I'm not going to pick him to win a fight if I know he's going to lose. Okay? The Blob is not the best fighter. Whoa, another knockdown. Nice. This guy, Nick Ball, is actually piecing this Vargas guy up. Here we go. Rubella standing in front of his victim. Actually, not as crazy of a size difference as I expected. Josh Parisian is a big dude, but, you know, athleticism-wise, he's not even close. He's about to get KO'd nonetheless because he's still smaller and he's all fat. Oh, another knockdown. Another knockdown. The fight's over. Fight's over. Bro, just end the fight. End the fight. He's not going to win. He's not going to win, dude. He's not going to win. It's over. 
Let's hope it's over. Here comes Mikhail Oleksaychuk. I'm picking him to beat Michelle Pereira. Told you not to shit on Nick Ball. Nick Ball's actually good. I'm a fan of him now. He's a real boxer. This is real boxing. <laughs> as soon as it heats up, it's real boxing. Lucas, have you ever battered a carrot? What does that even mean? Benoit Saint-Denis looks like a literal puppet on the scales at the official weigh-ins. A little bit. But I'm more confident after seeing him on the scales. He had a lot of energy. Nice knockdown, dude. Ball is the shorter man with Diddy boxing. He's actually fighting really well. He's imposing his will right now. He's not afraid to get hit. Parisian first death in the UFC. He's going to get KO'd stiff. It's going to be an ugly, nasty KO. Stiff. Here comes Michelle Pereira. He's going to have a massive advantage early on against Mikhail Oleksaychuk, but it's all going to come crashing down in the second round and the third. Lanklets can't fight. Yeah, I mean, they can, dude. Look at O'Malley. O'Malley can fight. But Piotr Jan beat him. And Piotr Jan, if that was a five-rounder, if that was a title fight, Jan would have won. Everyone agrees with that. There's no way you can debate against that. Jan was still fresh. Nice. Honestly, Mikhail Oleksaychuk is not nearly as small as I thought compared to Michelle Pereira. Mikhail Oleksaychuk has that ugly man style. Ugly jabs, ugly low kicks, big right hands, arm punches, but he's got good technique, good timing. He's a good striker. There's Felipe Linz. Old head Linz walking out. Thank you for the $2. Vafa B, crazy fight scene in Dune 2. Someone imposing their will. Nice. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm really looking forward to seeing it, man. It's all about imposing your will, guys. That's what it's all about. If any of you guys are ever considering fighting, that is the first thing that you need to do. Impose your will. Dune 1 was mid. Dune 1 was not mid. Uh, what the fuck is Kutalaba? No way. He's, <laughs> he's walking out fully green, dude. He usually just paints his face. Let's hope he wins. Let's hope Kutalaba wins, man. Kutalaba is a hungry, hungry man. Nice. Damn, dude. Kutalaba is, again, bigger than I thought compared to Felipe. All these guys are, are much more similar in stature. Kutalab is usually the, the much shorter guy. Here comes Kyler Phillips, Saucy Phillips. Thoughts on the blob strength and conditioning training? Um, I mean, it's atrocious, let's be honest. L look at his Instagram. Look at his Instagram. I'll pull up his Instagram strength and conditioning training in the desert. At least he's training in the desert, but I'll pull it up. Let's see. Shamil. This is basically, this is his, his routine. He's, you know, basically, look at him going to work in the desert. Shamil the Blam Gazia. Shamil the Blam Gazia. Shamil the Blam Gazia. My favorite fighter right there, guys. Bro needs conditioning. I mean, to be honest, hitting pads hard is a great way to get conditioned. That is probably the best way to get in really excellent shape outside of hard sparring and wrestling and all that. High interval training, high intensity interval training, obviously sprints on the elliptical bike. That's good too, but hitting pads is about as good as it gets for striking conditioning at least. Sparring is the best way. Sparring is excellent too, for sure. But on pads, you can go hard on pads for as long as you want. RIP Akira Toriyama. Everyone's saying RIP that guy. Is that the guy that uh, made Dragon Ball Z or was he a voice actor for Dragon Ball Z? Hockey is the best way for conditioning. 
I got sparring in two hours. Uh, when does it start? It's probably going to start in two hours. Like the fight will literally be on in two hours. So you'll probably miss it. It was supposed to start at five. They said main event start time is five. This is just so poorly run. Yeah, I've totally tuned out of this fight. Here's uh, Mateus and RDA. RDA looks ready to go, but he always looks like that. Nice. All right, who's coming out next? Is this the main card? Caitlin. Oh, here comes Caitlin Chikugian versus Macy Barber. Who you guys got? Macy Barber? Or, is she entertaining? Is Macy Barber entertaining in the cage? I, I kind of forget. It's been said the main event was 6.15, not 5. It's not even going to be at 6.15. R.I.P. Akira, damn, bro. The movie was a banger. Why do you bleach your eyebrows? I don't. Thank you for the $2. Joe Antonov. Um, who is Akita? Someone please clarify that. I'm pretty sure that's the Dragon Ball Z guy. I, I don't know. That's just what I've seen. Dragon Ball Z. Macy Barber's fighting. Is she a savage? So she imposes her will? It's just easy to forget some of these performances, you know? Akita created Dragon Ball. All right. I still haven't really watched that. I watched it. Here and there as a kid, but I never really got into it. Uh, why do you stroke off Peter Yan? I don't. I don't. I just break down his fight. Why? Because I like spent time talking about a fight. That means I'm glazing. That's crazy, man. I'm just predicting a fight and I'm giving arguments as to why I'm predicting it the way that I'm predicting it. Oh, I forget. I forget Barber's fights because I am sexist. Okay, got it. It might just be because they're forgettable. We ever thought of that? Lucas, the 300 Q&A was actually pretty funny. Well, I'll have to tune in. I'm sure they did a lot of Alex Pereira glazing, the fans. Oh, here comes. Who is this, Jilton? Sauced up Almeida walking out. They're not even showing him. There he is. Yep, he's on the sauce. 234? That's it? I mean, he's not that big for heavyweight, not going to lie, but still, he's on shit. Here's Curtis Blades. It doesn't matter. His his uh, strength will make up for it. Bloody man Blades. Here he comes. Sleepy man Blades. Low energy Blades. Honestly? They look pretty much the same, man. Blades is just a little fatter. <sighs> Almeida is going to take him down easily. Blades is a lock? You're crazy. Why? You think he's taking down Almeida? You think he's fast enough to do that? I don't think so. Here's Song and Yan. Man, I should have picked Almeida. You can still pick him. Why? <laughs> Why can't you just change your pick? Do you have like a YouTube channel? Do you post predictions or did you already bet on it? Then I'm pretty sure you can retract your bet. What are you watching right now? I'm watching the weigh-ins. Song Yudong looking lean and mean, looking shredded. Lots of people at the weigh-ins. The weigh-ins is kind of a waste of time, to be honest. I don't recommend going to the weigh-ins or the press conferences unless it's like a McGregor press conference or you just know it's going to be crazy. All right. Here's Jan. But you're there for like 20 minutes. That's it. Jan is looking shredded, man. He looks ready to go. <laughs> Jan looking sneaky. He's looking devious. That's the Jan I like. Dude, I don't think Song's ready, man. I, I don't think Song's prepared for this. I just still think he's a little bit green. He just doesn't have the experience, man. Song's still a kid. You don't have, get, you don't have the experience. I think he's going to lose. He hasn't, he hasn't seen enough. He's not seen enough. He's not the wiser guy. Here comes JDM. <laughs> JDM, man. JDM is pretty jacked. 
one of the most underrated physiques in MMA. Rocking the hoodie. He's going Colby Covington mode. Hoodie always at the weigh-ins. Here comes Dorino. Gilbert Burns shaved his head. Or did he get braids? Oh, no, he just got braids. Braided Gilbert Burns. I don't know if I've... Have we ever seen this? I don't think we've ever seen this. We may have. I don't remember if he ever got... No, this is, might be the first time. Nice stare down. Yeah, JDM's going to kick his ass. Holland and MVP as Vargas and Ball were in the 12th round, the 11th round. Uh, boxing, man. Such a horrible sport. Oh, man. This is terrible. This is a ter What is up with MVP's flag? What country is he repping? Why doesn't he have the British flag on there? Do you think a 25-minute fight favors Cheeto because he's super durable? Yes, 25-minute fight is better for Cheeto than a 15-minute fight. O'Malley is not proven in 25-minute fights. Most guys, in my opinion, have an edge over O'Malley in a 25-minute fight. Anyone that'll actually fight, though, like in the top five. He's not representing anyone? I don't know. That's kind of weird. He's from the UK. He lives in the UK. He was born in there. What's going on with that? I don't understand it. Kevin Holland. MVP is from space. Was he born? I'm pretty sure he was. Kevin Holland never has a great... Oh, Kevin Holland has a good stare down now. MVP is doing the hand thing, the snake thing. Oh, <laughs> he's, oh, they're holding hands. What the hell? <sighs> this is not. He's born in London and he lives there now. How come he's not repping the UK? That's weird. That's kind of weird, man. Here comes Benoit. Staff all cleared up. Nice. Staff is all cleared up, man. Mike Tyson, new champ? I don't think so. Yep, Benoit is going to win the fight. He has energy. He, he has more energy than DP. Dustin Poirier is walking out like an old dog. <laughs> old dog DP. Now, nah, DP looks in shape. He looks in shape. He's got a wide, he's got a, a wide back. He's looking lean and mean. But Benoit's ready to go. Dustin Poirier just don't have that dog in him, man. We just don't have that dog no more. <laughs> I'm just joking. Joking. Nice. Okay, now we have the fucking main event. I don't know. The weigh-ins are always a little anticlimactic. There's just not a whole lot going on. We've seen it all. Only weigh-ins that are fun is when there's a big beef. Piotr Jan faced the 11th ranked fighter and lost Glazer. O'Malley? Yeah, and O'Malley's the champ. It'd be embarrassing if O'Malley never won the belt and he lost to O'Malley anyway, but O'Malley went on to become a champ. The loss is aged well. And Jan won the fight. It was a robbery. So there's that. So you're also just wrong. So there's that. Thank you for the 279, though. Appreciate that. Boxing is so cooked. I know. It's pathetic. It's, it's not a good sport. It's old. It's outdated. It's sparring. Boxing is literally just sparring. Dana with the fresh Jordan 1s. Is he wearing Jordan 1s? I, I didn't, haven't even seen Dana. It wasn't a robbery. It was. It was a robbery. Sean edged the first and won the third. He did not win the third. He cut Jan in the third, but he got his ass kicked for four minutes of the third round. So you're either going with a cut, a knee that caused a cut, a couple of jabs, and a head kick, 
or you're going with Yan with massive counters, ground and pound. That was the only round where Yan was really landing good ground and pound. Multiple takedowns, nasty knees to the body, big body kicks, big hooks. Yan wins the fight. Sorry, Yan won the fight. Easy second round win. Easy third round win. Dana with the fresh J1s. I saw it. I saw it. I have not seen Dana with the fresh Js. The knee was huge, though. The knee was good. The knee was good, but Jan got O'Malley to the body with the knee. That honestly hurt O'Malley. No way O'Malley won that fight. It doesn't matter if he landed more. He got his ass kicked. That's the difference. One guy landed more. The other guy kicked the other one's ass. It's like Whitaker. Whitaker landed more on Yoel Romero. Does that mean that he wins the third? No, not at all. Rob Font landed more than Cheeto in some of the rounds where he lost it because he got knocked down badly. Does that mean he wins? No. Whoever causes more damage and whoever beats the other guy up better is the one that wins. And Jan beat O'Malley up better in the third. O'Malley had maybe like a 30-second sprint moment where he landed some good jabs, landed a good knee, landed a head kick. Jan wasn't rocked. The optics of seeing Jan shoot a rust takedown after getting head kicked makes it seem as if it was a panic takedown, and it kind of may have been. But at the same time, it's just the optics that look bad. When in reality, he was all there, and he just shot a really good takedown. Uh, I kind of look like you. Well, it does look like me, because it might be. Thank you for the $2, Rod Spammer HD. Appreciate that. Thank you for the two. Um, but yeah. I think that people look at that one little sequence. They look at the cut. The cut definitely counts. I, it's hard to argue against it, but Jan beat O'Malley up in that round. Okay. People need to move on. Jan needs to beat Song. It, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. All I'm saying is that Jan didn't really lose that fight. I think he won the fight. And that's you can make a rob you can make an argument for it. The crafty vet needs to bite down on the mouthpiece and throw meaty overhands and overcome his wobblestone cobblestone knees. Okay. I don't know who you're talking about. Anyway, here's Cheeto walking out with the Ecuadorian flag. Here comes O'Malley. Let's see if O'Malley gets any pop. Thank goodness that boxing match is over. Thank gosh. Here comes O'Malley. O'Malley's hiding staff. He's hiding his staff infection with the hat, man. I might change my pick. O'Malley wearing a hat. What's going on with that, man? Oh, he's talking some smack. Yo, Cheeto's looking bigger than O'Malley. He's looking denser. His head is bigger. Yo, I'm I'm worried about my pick. Happy, though, that I might get it wrong. I'll be happy if I get it wrong, but still. But it would be nice to get every single pay-per-view main event right this year, would it not? It would be nice to have all correct main event picks for the last four pay-per-views. That'd be pretty cool, too. Yeah, let's go. Cheeto's getting an ovation from the Ecuadorian fans. Let's hear them boo O'Malley. Boo. Fluke. It was a little bit fluky. It kind of was, but still. All right, man. There we go. There we go. Nice wins. But it's time to watch some real fighting. It's time to get serious with boxing. Thank you for the $6.99 Canadian dollars. Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso were the next season tough coaches. It doesn't matter. The show's done. Who cares? It doesn't matter.
if you're complaining about that, you're just fighting a dead cause. It, it, why, why even complain? What, you want to save tough? How are you going to save it? With better coaches? They tried that last time, and it was horrible. No one watched it. If Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler, which may not even be the ideal coaching team, if that can at least sustain people over the course of a whole season or at least five or six episodes, nothing is going to get anyone to really watch. All right. And the fighters that go on that are just not the highest quality fighters. A lot of them are washed. Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso are going to be super nice to each other. Who cares? Who cares? <sighs> Both in witness protection from Aaron, Aaron Blanchfield Glazer. Omar. Omar is a big glazer of these... Uh, WMMA fighters, man. I've noticed that. Big Glazer. He really wants to prove that they're just as tough. They're just as rowdy and entertaining. Contender Series is way better than tough. Yes, Contender Series is a lot better. And even the Contender Series doesn't necessarily have the best fighters on it. The best fighters usually just come out of nowhere, like Rebellus to Spain, or they're coming straight from another promotion. They don't even go on the Contender Series. Bad to the bone. No nano nano. Bad to the bone. No nano nano. Aaron is bad. Aaron is actually a, a good fighter. I'll give you that. Uh, thank you for the five bucks. Tough was a product of its time. It should have ended years ago. Exactly. Reality TV in general is done. It's done. Uh, Connor, what's good? Would you come on a podcast if I flew you out? I would consider it. It depends on the timing. Of course. It depends on the timing. You know, I mean, I am considering traveling soon to look at some houses in uh, some other states. So if you hit me up, we could maybe work something like that out. Uh, but of course, it would need to be a, a short thing because I got to stay active with the content. Move to Florida or Texas. I am going to be going to Texas. I'm going to book a trip to Texas just to look at places and i'm not even necessarily going to rent anyone out but just to look around just to see what's up my goal in the future is just to have a nice piece of land i can have a nice big fenced area where i have some animals some cows in a beautiful location quiet location something simple like that and i think the best place to get that might be texas we'll see Upstate New York has a lot of good land as well, but the weather is the issue, and I'm kind of done with the weather on the East Coast. I've, I've been through it. I don't need any more of it for the rest of my life, bro. Why is rising Hispanic women so much easier? I don't know. Thank you for the two bucks, Johnson. Is it? Thank you for the $2, Hardy999. Move to the West Coast. Flights are easier to watch. Fights are easier to watch? Yes. Well, that's a thing, man. It, it is... Very important. That is honestly one of the most important factors on where I'm going to be moving to. You know, I would love to move to Europe, for example. I would love to go to Europe, but I just can't do it if I'm an MMA content creator. I just can't. And then I'll end up like the MMA guru, <laughs> right? I'll be going to bed at 11 a.m. And I'm already going to bed sometimes at 6 a.m., 5 a.m. And that's rough on me. And I don't like that. It does fuck with my sleep schedule. It really does. But MMA Guru, you know, he's he has a way worse. You Irish fans, you British fans, you all the European fans in here, you guys have it rough. Well, to be honest, if you're just a fan, you just have it as bad as me. Because even though you're going to bed late, I when I end my stream, I have to record the videos. Sometimes I do two back to back. But being a content creator in Europe would suck. But if I go to the West Coast, it would be a lot better. The main card would finish at around... 10 p.m. as opposed to 1 and then I would get all my videos done by like 1 a.m. max so that could be the move but where on the west coast because I don't want to move to California Hawaii would be cool but it's just too expensive you know Hawaii I, would I would be ideal for time zone or maybe somewhere like Australia or New Zealand but Hawaii is too expensive 
Australia and New Zealand are just so foreign and I don't know anything about how what it's like to live there. The government doesn't sound so great. Where else am I going to go? Costa Rica? So, I don't know. I just I'll probably go to the Midwest. Probably somewhere in the Midwest. Arizona, yeah, it could, you know, I, I don't know what it's like in the desert environment. It's very desert like place. It'd be very different. I think Texas would be a good in between. The most important thing for me is time zone and weather. And, ob well, you know, not, well, then I would move to Cali. It's time zone, weather, and then the government a little bit, a lot of it. Thank you, Abu Dhabi, uh, or urban. Uh, urban German, my bad. Thank you, Abu Dhabi. I was saying Abu Dhabi, London, Paris cards is a blessing to us. Yes, true. Yeah, I used to dislike the Abu Dhabi card time and the London card time because I didn't love watching fight cards in the day because I just wouldn't know what to do with myself after. But now that I'm a content creator and I make MMA content, it's great for me because I know I'm going to make videos afterwards anyway. That way I can go to bed at a reasonable time. Dubai? Nah, I don't want to move to Dubai. I don't want to go there. I will check it out someday, but I, I don't really want to live in the Middle East. Dubai is just not for me. Uh, thank you for the five bucks. I'd like to go to the Middle East. I just don't want to live in Dubai. I'm not really a, I don't really like cities that much, you know, and that's kind of all it is. It's you're either in the city or you're in the desert and you can't live in the fucking desert. Thank you for the five bucks. Come to Vegas. Vegas could be cool. But I, I don't really want to live in a, in, a, in a city. And it's too desert-like. Go to Florida. Where do you live right now? I live in Jersey right now. Thank you for the $2. I, I, I could go to Florida, but the summers are rough. <laughs> no place is ideal, obviously. No place is ideal. Anchorage. You want me to move to Anchorage with Joey? MMA Joey does not live in Anchorage, brother. Dagestan. I would actually like to go to Dagestan. I will go to Dagestan. I will visit it someday, 100%. Every Australian had to watch Volk get KO'd at 5 a.m. when he rematched Islam. Dude, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. Any takeaways from weigh-ins? We need the body language expert intel. Uh, yes, my takeaway is that I'm more confident in Benoit Saint-Denis than I was yesterday and the day before, even if he has staph infection. <laughs> I'm no longer as worried because he, he seemed to have a lot of energy on the scale. So that's good. That's great. And people are saying that he's got a low energy when he's facing off with Dustin in his interviews too. But I think that that's how he always is. He's just kind of chill in general. He's just got the, the laid back energy on fight week. But he'll be turning it up when it comes time for fighting. Definitely. And then other takeaways... Josh Parisian is bigger than I thought. I didn't expect him to be nearly the same height as Robellus, even though he's not the same height. Nearly the same height. He still is just all fat, though. A lot of similar statures in the faceoffs, like Mikhail Alexeychuk and Michelle Pereira, much more similar in stature than I expected. Even though it's Pereira that's moving up, I expected him to tower over him. Cheeto, taller than I thought. Compared to O'Malley, right? You think of Cheeto as just like a smaller bantamweight, not weight wise, but height wise, but he's actually kind of close to O'Malley. He's a lot taller than Jan, at least. Vegas is a shit city, but its surrounding areas are not. Look in Henderson, Summerlin, it's where the apex is. Very nice place that aren't Vegas like. Okay. I can check those places out. Thank you for the 10 months membership, 16 caps. Move to Ohio so you can experience how big of a star Stipe is. I know Stipe is a megastar. I know he's the king in Ohio, man. You don't even need to tell me twice. If you go to Ohio, they got Stipe signs. They have Stipe statues. I know it. People from any other place in the U.S., you would not know that. But I've been to Ohio. They actually have Stipe Miocic shrines there. It is pretty crazy. It is pretty nuts. Nah, Cheeto is clearly one of the taller bantamweights. Yeah, but for whatever reason, I, I always think of him as like a bit of a shorter guy. Thank you for the one-month membership. Well, I already read this, but thank you, Aiden Regan. I appreciate the one-month membership. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Blades look smaller compared to Almeida. I mean, they, they are similar in stature. Yeah, I thought Blades was going to be a lot bigger in general, even though Almeida's on sauce. They're pretty similar. I, I'm very confident that Almeida beats Blades. I don't see how Blades wins unless he KOs him. So, yeah. Anyway, we have Parker and Zhang coming up next. So, I wonder how long it's going to be until they actually fight. Probably 30 minutes, most likely. I expected at this point we would have been in the final round of Ngannou versus Joshua if there wasn't a KO. But no. We are still 20 minutes out from Zhang versus Parker. Let's see what they're saying. Zhang is the uncrowned champ. Really? I'll be the judge of that, man. I'm a harsh critic. Thank you for the five CHF. Come to Switzerland. It's so much. There's so much green here. And for the potheads, the best weed. Well, I'm not a pothead. Chocolate and fine women. Okay, well, I'm not going to move to Europe. I want to visit Switzerland. I really do. But I'm not going to move to Europe because of the time zone. And it would just would not work with what I'm doing right now as an MMA content creator. It would ruin my sleep schedule. It would take years off of my life. So no, thank you. But I will visit it someday. Ever been to Arizona, top tier state? No, I've not. Thank you for the five bucks. Your local tweaker. Thank you. Why is Parker fighting again so recent? He's a Chad. He's tough. And Saudi Arabia is willing to empty the bank to pay him, man. So good for them. DraftKings, man. Dude, boxing is just lame. It's just outdated. It's lame. Even the content creators for boxing, are, they're not that great. All right, let's see what, what's going on. Do we have a walkout anytime soon? It's unbearable to watch. I know. Let, let's see what's going on. Let's check out the production. Let's try to enjoy it as a fan. I'll critique it with, with you guys. Oh, wow. Another promotion for Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. It's not like we've already seen five of these today. This is just ridiculous, guys. This is ridiculous. Uh, I'll try my best to not be biased, but UFC sets the bar too high. True, it is unfair to compare everything to the UFC, which is just so much better. But man, even PFL does it better than boxing. Bellator does it better than boxing. One does it better than boxing. The big four MMA promotions do it better than any boxing promotion on the planet. So many easy fixes. I, I don't know who's running the show, but I could picture the people that are fucking doing it, dude. Probably some people in their late 30s, early 40s. Bunch of people that look like secretaries that that aren't actually big fans of the sport. But yeah. It's disgusting. They plan on having boxing at the Apex. I would much rather watch Zufa boxing. I know Dana White's going to do a good job of it. Here's Joseph Parker. No, that's Zhang. Zhang is a big boy. Zhang is looking dense, man. He is he is density maxing right now. But I, I don't think he's going to win. I think that Zhang is very overrated, guys. Look at this guy. He's not even dense. He's just fat. And he's just fighting cans. Who is like 30 pounds, 40 pounds heavier than. Because there's no weight limit. Or I'm sorry, there, there's no weight cap. I think you could be whatever weight you want. In boxing. At heavyweight, at least. Zhang's got a chin and hits hard. You know, he hits kind of hard, but I, I wouldn't say he hits that hard. Oh, what's she going to tell us? Oh, David Hay and whoever this guy is. Nice. Nice, man. Can't wait to just be put on by these guys. They're going to put us on game right now about boxing. Dude, just fuck off. Can you just get on with ah, this? The boxing literally just makes me want to smash through a wall. It pisses me off that much. 
Fuck, I, I just want to scream at the top of my lungs every time I'm watching this shit. Gosh, I'd love to get in a room with the people that are in charge of the production to let them hear it. I'm just, I'm saving my energy. I, I don't want to ruin my voice before tomorrow and before the Nganu fight and before my video. I don't want to ruin my voice, but it really does make me just want to smash it and rage. Commercials during a pay-per-view. It's just... Wait, why do we need to listen to this? People that bought the pay-per-view don't give a fuck. They just want to see the fight. Get on with it. And I guarantee you, before the co-main event, they're going to be doing the same thing with Nganu and Joshua. Doing their little breakdowns. Like We're going to see them wrapping their hands in the back room. 20 minutes after the co-main event. I can't stand this. I hate boxing. I hate the way that they set this up with all my heart. It sucks so much. It's like an all-day thing. That's basically what, what they do. They waste your entire day. At least the UFC is only on for seven hours. And that seems like a long time, but it really isn't anything compared to boxing. I'm pretty sure this card started at 11. It's not going to end. It's going to be like nine hours. The UFC isn't seven hours. It's more like six. This is going to be like nine. They got Francis fighting at 3 a.m. in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> My goodness, man. Makachev and Volkanovsky had ended 30 minutes ago <laughs> when the UFC was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm sorry, in Abu Dhabi. Lucas, are you happy? You always seem depressed. No, no, no. I'm not depressed at all. I am pretty happy. Thank you for the $2. I've been having a good day today. I've been having a great day. I'm just kind of eager for this to just end. Not for it to end, but just to see the main event. I, I don't want to see anything else. I bought the pay-per-view for Nganu and Joshua. I want to watch it. I want to do my video on it. And then I want to chill. But I, I honestly think it's going to take the whole night. And I don't think I'm going to have time to watch this movie that I wanted to see. So I'm a little bit upset about that. I wanted to watch Dune too. <laughs> Did it start? Yeah, it's being ran by old people. I don't think Joshua Knox and Ganu out. Oh, no, definitely not. He's a better boxer. We all know it, but he's probably not going to KO and Ganu. He has to be perfect for 12 rounds. It'd be cool to see them knock each other down a few times, though, to see them have a war. That's always fun. All right, they're interviewing Zhang. Let's see what he says. Oh. Da da how. Thank you for the 20 NOK. This event started six hours ago. And there's been like, what? Six fights? That's the thing. The UFC, they have a six-hour event. They have 12, 13, 14 fights. Boxing is seven fights. And it takes them nine hours. I'd listen to you over Wade, but now I wait for Guru. All right. Thank you for the $2. Well, I guess I'm not the lowest on the totem pole, but uh, I'm in the middle. Still need to work my way up. Thank you for the $2, Juan. I appreciate that. Yeah, Wade's been on for a long time. I, I checked YouTube before I went to the gym and he just started his live stream. He's probably disappointed as well. How many people does he have in his live stream right now? Holy shit, we have 1.2K people in here. I didn't even think that we had that many. That's crazy. First time I looked over at that. Do you have any boxing experience? Yes. Of course, I have some boxing experience. Dude, I grew up watching Marty Lou. I grew up around the gyms. I grew up watching Marty Lou. That's where real boxing is at. As I say, this is not real boxing. This is influencer boxing. You got Zhang. You got Parker. Deontay Wilder. It's just uh, these are all man-made stars. These are fraudulent stars. Real boxing is in the gym. The real boxing was left in the 90s, in the 80s, when... Everyone had their shot. You, you wanted to step up to the plate, you could step up to the plate. Nowadays, it's just there's politics. It's just hard to get involved. And uh, it's a circus act. Look at Devin Haney. Look at this. Look at this. Hey, hey, David Hay. Look at this guy. It's just crazy at this point. Don't forget the concert before the main event. And there's going to be a concert as well. Yeah. Real boxing died a long time ago. But I do have some boxing experience. I actually do. I, I started boxing before I ever did Muay Thai. Long before. 
long before, man. It was a hard transition. It was hard for me to give up the gloves and to transition into the freaking four ounce Muay Thai gloves. I'm joking. I know they, they use the big gloves in Muay Thai, but it was a long time. It took a while for me to, to drop that part of my life. It was like a, a piece of my soul died when I dropped the boxing. It was tough. It was tough. Zhang is like the boxing Drickus with how he fights. Yeah, yeah the boxing Drickus. It'll be 10 times more boring. 10 times less impressive. What, you, you mean he just throws big shots into everything and never gasses out and has a good chin? And is willing to get hit? There you go, but it's always worse. Matias, Subriel Matias is that guy that everyone is going crazy about as being really entertaining. And he's like the Charles Oliveira of boxing. He's boring. I'd rather watch a Jared Gordon fight than a Subriel Matias fight. Jared Gordon has banger fights compared to him. Imagine Francis gets the KO and starts muzzing. I hope he does. Thank you for the two Australian dollars, the Rory Bray. We've almost been on for two hours, guys. This is nuts. Just getting off of work. Is the fight on right now? Fight is going to be on in 10 minutes. You got to rush home. Rush home. It's going to be on in 10. You're wasting your time. It's going to be on in 10. I don't know what you're doing out right now, but you may be cooked at this point. I'm joking. The co-main event hasn't started. The feature fight ended about 20 minutes ago. We're not even close to the walkout. Oh, is this a concert? Or is this the walk? Oh, no, no. Now they're back to two other reporters because we have to hear from these guys. Ariel Hawani and whatever this guy's name is. With the milk dud head. Joseph Parker. The only one that took this. Yeah, because... The other guys all have fights booked. I guess the way Ariel Hwani says Adesanya's name is so cringe. He doesn't even pronounce it right. Even And he's trying to pronounce it right. And he, he tries too hard. The way that he says it, it's almost, he needs to put more emphasis on it to be less cringe. He tries to go through it like, oh, nothing happened. This is just how you pronounce it. I'm cultured and pronouncing it well. Very cringy. It's Israel Adesanya. Okay? It's Adesanya. Get it right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is impressive that he beat Deontay Wilder. I will say that. This Joseph Parker guy beating Deontay. The way that he beat him is very impressive. He says Madvidal. He says it with a lisp, right? Is that how he says it? Like a Spaniard? Jorge Madvidal. Is that how he says it? At least Dan Hardy. People say Dan Hardy's cringe. Dan Hardy knows this. Dan Hardy doesn't do shit like that. No rigorous training. How do you fight at 3 a.m.? How do I fight at 3 a.m.? How do you do fighting at 3 a.m.? What do you mean by that? I'm kind of confused by what you mean. Thank you for the $2 blinders. No rigorous training? I have have done rigorous training. I actually have. How do you? How would I fight at 3 a.m.? I mean, probably not that well. Why? You're basically asking me... I don't understand. What's your point? What's your point? Because they're fighting at 3? Oh, I mean, I wouldn't fight well at three. That's pathetic. Yeah, it, it, it's screwing over the fighters. Why are they making these guys wait that much time? But it doesn't really matter. I mean, these guys aren't in the back hitting pads, preparing. Everyone chills. They're arriving to the arena after the previous fight takes place. It takes them an hour to get ready. So honestly, it's not really wasting anyone's time, but it is just annoying, dude. Milk dud, is that a black thing? Thank you for the two bucks. I mean, I'm just looking at this guy's head. It's shiny like a milk dud, okay? It is shiny like a milk dud. And, uh, I mean, there's that. Um, boxing is so boring, man. It is boring. Bro, why are you mad boxing is the only professional sport? All right, it's not the only professional sport. Boycott boxing. 
I'm only watching it for the main event. I just thought that it would be on sooner. I was told 5 p.m. by DAZN itself. And here we are. It's about to be six. The co-main event hasn't even started. And these guys are just yapping about the co-main. We've had three different media teams with microphones yap about it already. <sighs> Enough. There was just a decision. What are we waiting for? I know. It's pathetic. The only time the UFC makes us wait is if there's an early finish and it's the prelims and they have to do their advertisements. And that still is way faster than this. A decision in the UFC, the next fight is on 15 minutes later, less, 10 minutes later. They're in the cage being announced. Pay-per-view, same thing. First round KO, next fight's on 10 minutes later. They don't get it. They don't get it. Why? I just don't understand why they think this is a good idea. I'm calling them out again. I'm, I'm going to call them out again for this bullshit. Zhang by KO, right hook there all day. Michigan on top. I might not even talk. If Anthony Joshua beats Nganu, I'm literally going to talk about that for one minute, and then I'm just going to rip on boxing because there's nothing to talk about if Joshua wins. Who cares, honestly? Really, who cares? If Francis wins, I'll talk about it for four minutes, and then I'll rip on boxing. There's still a concert. There's no way there's a concert. I didn't get off work for an hour, so this is great. Fair enough. That's good for you. Here comes Joseph Parker. Let's hope this ends in a KO in the first round. Because I honestly think boxing may prefer that. I mean, I don't fucking know. Francis is not going to be on until 7. Probably 7.30. They're honestly just ruining everyone's weekend. Can you thank me, Lucas? I love John Cena. Thank you for the 279 Canadian dollars. I appreciate that. Zachary, thank you so much. Thank you for the $2. Seb, 10. Zhang by KO, right hook is there all day. Well, Michigan on top. Well, thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. Let's hope he gets it done early, but I don't think that'll speed things up. <sighs> Zhang Wei Li is fighting? No. Zhang from boxing, from the boxing world, man. A worse Zhang. Uh, Zhang Wei Li probably kicks his ass too because she's an MMA fighter. She's a tough cookie. That's the thing. It's like, how are we really supposed to respect this when we know that even a measly old WMMA fighter, 125 pound champ could beat one of these guys. Zhang is 291 pounds. 291 pounds. Still wouldn't even crack it in the flyweight division. That's nuts. Just think about that. Wouldn't even crack it against flyweights. <laughs> Wouldn't even crack it against flyweights. Zhang Wei Li schools these fools? <laughs> Probably. Can you shout out Robbie Lawler? I miss him. Shout out to Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Unfortunately, the end of his career was a little bit boring, but he had a great finish on his way out against Nico Price. Legend. Shout out to Robbie Lawler. Steven Ursek chins these guys. Most likely, it, he actually knows how to fight in a real fight with four ounce gloves. These guys aren't used to getting hit with four ounces. But I still do think that Tyson Fury would beat Francis Ngannou in a fight because he is the long rangey guy. I do believe he's a little bit better than Cyril Gaon. And look at what Cyril Gaon did to him. Cyril Gaon took Francis down. I mean, that's the guy that got submitted by John Jones. Imagine what Fury would do. <laughs> uh, when are we going to start rallying behind Steve Ursic? I don't really think he's a guy that needs us to rally behind him. I think he's just going to, I mean, what has he done? He's, he's had some good wins. He, he's a fun fighter, but rally behind him. Why? Is he like the most entertaining flyweight or something? He's a good flyweight. There's that. Um, but we, we don't know if he has a personality. I'm rallying behind Shamil Gaziev. I'm rallying behind Shamil. That's the fighter that we should rally behind. Lucas hates Ursic. I don't. I like Ursic. I do like Ursic. I'm sorry. Maybe we should rally behind him. But I, I mean, he's all right. He's okay. Here comes Joseph Parker. Well, you know, at least this should be an entertaining fight. And I'll be able to harshly judge and scrutinize the highest level in boxing to compare it to MMA afterwards. I think that these two fights will give us a better perspective as to whether MMA fighters could step into the boxing at any weight class and dominate. 
Because people say, well, it's heavyweight. It's different. Is it, though? I mean, heavyweight in MMA sucks, too. Francis Ngannou was champion in the worst weight class in MMA. Is it really different? How do you think the best fighters in MMA would do if they crossed over to boxing? It'd be the same thing. But people aren't ready for that. They're not ready for that combo. Of course, Conor McGregor with a horrible gas tank loses to Floyd Mayweather. Terrible gas tank, and everyone thinks that that's how every fight's going to go. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think Ilya Taporia would be able to do well in boxing. Ilya crosses over, I guarantee you he fights for a world title. Does he win? I don't know, but he fights for a world title. He beats the contenders. Volk is a tough out versus Crawford for sure. Ilya is 50-50. I wouldn't say Ilya is 50-50. Crawford probably beats him, but yeah, I don't think Volk is that tough of an out. But if Volk has years to get ready for it in his prime and he never goes to MMA. If Volk just boxed to begin with and didn't do MMA, oh my goodness, he would destroy Terrence Crawford. 100% he would annihilate him. If Volk only had to do one discipline, yeah, he's more talented than Terrence Crawford. Much harder to get to the top of the featherweight division than it is to get to the top of the featherweight division in boxing. Volk would not be Crawford right now. Let's not be crazy. Lucas, all MMA fighters will gas out by the fifth round. Conor McGregor didn't gas out till the 10th, and Conor McGregor has one of the worst gas tanks in high-level MMA, at least in the lighter weight classes, so he's not exactly the best representation of the average high-level MMA fighter that has a good gas tank. Why, you think, oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Volk wasn't gassing out in a 25-minute fight against a much bigger guy in Islam Makhachev, where there's grappling involved, kicks involved, super high pace, five-minute rounds. But yeah, he just wouldn't be able to stand in there with Terrence Crawford throwing hands. For sure. Yeah, throwing hands. Six punches around in boxing. Yeah, he's totally going to gas. Enough. Conor McGregor gassed. He has a horrible gas tank at MMA. The whole idea of boxing cardio is just different. No, it's not. It's not at all. Why? Because they run? Running is not the best cardio for MMA in general. Sprints is better than running. Long distance running is more of a cultural thing in boxing. It's just something that everyone does. With 30 second breaks in between rounds, 30 second breaks in between rounds. Boxing doesn't have 30 second breaks. They have one minute breaks. 30 seconds. Boxing is a minute in between rounds. Three most confident picks this card. UFC or this? My most confident picks. Rebellus to Spain. Mateus Scamrot. And... I don't know. It's hard for me to come up with another one. No, not Mikal. Mikal is kind of confident, but not Mikal. Rebellus, Scamrot, and not O'Malley. Definitely not that confident in O'Malley. No, not JDM. Not Benoit Saint Denis. I don't know. Those are the two most confident picks. I, I don't know if I could say I'm that confident on anyone else. Asu? Yeah, maybe, but you never know. He's had one UFC fight. I'm not that confident in him. Almabayev? Yeah, only one. Jan? No, not Jan. There's another fighter that I'm forgetting about, though. Ion, honestly, I might say Ion, but I, I honestly am not that confident. I just think that this is a, a drop off in competition for Kutalaba. Big drop off in competition, even though he's doing well, but he's a kind of a journeyman who's beat up fat heavyweights. Felipe Lenz. Almeida. Yeah, I might honestly throw Almeida in there. I might throw Almeida in there. Those are the three Jilton Almeida, Mateus Gamrot, Rebellus to Spain. I just don't see Curtis Blades knocking Almeida out. He could, I just don't see it happening. And I don't see him taking down Almeida. I see Almeida beating Curtis Blades, even if it's a boring decision. I just think he's too fast for him. He's strong enough to take him down. Blades off of his back, I just can't expect him to be that good. Lots of fights are coin tosses, yes. Jan and Song, I wouldn't consider that a coin toss, but like it's super competitive and you, you know that either guy can win. O'Malley, Cheeto, I think O'Malley wins, but not 
that confident. JDM, Burns, I think what, the coin tosses for me are fights like McCall and Pereira. That's that's a very close fight, I, but I think Pitt McCall, it's going to go his way. Piotr Jan and Song Yudong may be one of the closest fights on the card in general. So, yeah, Yudong is a sloppier version of Yang. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, he's just a little bit less skilled, 100%. Little more power, for sure. Little less skilled. And cardio is kind of similar. Would you start more Thai or kickboxing coming from Taekwondo? Well, I don't come from Taekwondo, but would you start it? Uh, well, I've done Muay Thai and kickboxing back in the day. Thank you for the $5. I love the videos. They get me through my shifts. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm happy that you enjoy the content. I would love to try Muay Thai and kickboxing again. I would love to pick it up again. But I just have to make time for it, man. And right now, things are about to get real busy for me in a few weeks. They're going to rob Jan. Yeah, I could see it. Zhang is density maxing his way through the weigh-in. Or not the weigh-in, but the call-out, whatever. Zhang looks like he's going on a goon streak. <laughs> Fight's still not on. Nope. It's about to be the co-main event. Lots of Chinese people supporting. That's nice. Zhang's got some followers in the building. Isn't Dustin Poirier versus Benoit St. Denise a five-rounder? Yes, it is. Why? Why do you ask? I'm actually really confident in O'Malley. He'll be smart about it. Yeah, but Cheeto is just someone that can't be finished. And he is, honestly, in my opinion, a little bit underrated by a lot of people. Song is more powerful and explosive. Jan is more technical, but doesn't always have the stopping power. True. Yeah. And the pressure, like with the Marab fight, the take you off the press. Yeah, but Song doesn't have the ability to pressure. I, I think that if, if you're if people try to compare Jan's ability to take pressure with his ability to like on average with his ability to take pressure against Marab, I, I think that that's just not a good way to look at it. Marab is like no one else. Song is just not going to bring the same style of fight to him. There's no way. Here we go. Zhang and Parker. Here we go, guys. Zhang is looking awfully plotty. Let's see how he would do well. Let's see if he would do well in the UFC. Because right now it looks like Gone would piece both of these guys up. Why couldn't they call him the big bomb? I'm sorry, man, but Zhang would never get far in MMA. Not with that physique. Zhang would be like a top 14 rank. He'd be like a 14 ranked heavyweight in the UFC. I mean, I guess it's not fair to, to say how they would do in the UFC, but listen, Cyril Gond would be piecing him up. Look at how plotty he is. Look at how plotty Zhang is. Oh my gosh. Look at that one-two from Parker. That was ugly. For an elite level heavyweight? That was kind of ugly, man. Bro, next weekend's fight night main event. I'm sure it's terrible. It's tied to Ivasa versus Tabora, isn't it? Damn, this is a horrible fight so far. Gone would have landed like 10 jabs on Zhang already at this point. Gone would be moving around, bouncing on his feet. Pavlovich might even KO Zhang. Pavlovich probably KOs him. Most likely. Damn, this is high level boxing? My goodness.
Aspinall would put him... Oh my goodness, Aspinall would put his lights out. You know how much more talented Aspinall is than these guys? Why is there no crowd? There is, but they just have no energy. Gone would have gassed after 10 jabs. That's, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 10 jabs. Gone can throw a million kicks deep into a fight in a five-rounder. He can land a lot in the clinch, but yeah, he'll gas after 10 jabs in a little boxing match against a guy that doesn't move at all like Zhang. Look at that. Look at that movement. Wow, how slick. Honestly, it looks like these guys have been training for a year. I know that heavyweights usually aren't nearly as skilled as lighter guys, but the, the level of boxing that I'm seeing right now, this is like guys that have been training for a year and a half. How do you even score a round like that? Yeah, that's another thing that sucks about boxing. There's 12 rounds just like that. You, it's hard to score any of them. Heavyweight had more skills before. I know. Heavyweight boxing used to be a lot better than this. And people had the nerve to say that Francis would lose to this guy? Are you fucking kidding me? I remember I made a video about Francis and his chances to beat Zhang after Francis did what he did to Fury. And people were saying, what? Dude, relax. Slow your roll. Zhang would kill Francis. Sure. Yeah, Francis and Ghana wouldn't stand a chance against this fucking Teletubby. 300 pound plodster. Zhang hits hard. Not nearly as hard as... In yeah, Zhang has like thudding power. I've seen Zhang's KOs before. Actually, I haven't. So I, <laughs> I, I, I could be just be talking about... I could be talking out my ass, but... I'd imagine that Zhang's KOs were like... Oh, he's got him up against the ropes, thudding shots. He has like the Sergei Pavlovich type of power in boxing, but he's plotty. And he can only deliver it against cans. Nganu has one punch KO power. Zhang has one punch KO power against people that like can't box at all. But against people that, you know, know how to take a shot, no, he doesn't have that kind of power. Francis could KO anyone. Zhang, he's a, he's a guy that needs to put things together. He's got to drop someone and he has like flash knockdown power. Imagine what a prime prime Marty Lewis would have landed like thirty body shots on Zhang already. Prime Marty Lewis would be fighting Zhang like Subriel Matias. Zhang would not be fast enough to touch him, and Marty Lewis would still be outweighed by like fifty five pounds. Marty Lewis back in his day was, I think he was like two hundred and eight, two hundred and eight pounds, lean and mean, fast. Zhang has pillow hands. Actually, no, he doesn't have pillow hands, but. This is a joke. This is a joke. I never want to hear I never want to hear boxing fans tell me that the boxers could beat Francis Ngannou after this one. Francis would have KO'd him already. He's too slow, he's too open. Francis would have eaten one of Zhang's shots to land one of his own. He would have knocked him down, landing a punch right behind the ear. Zhang would have been dropped a couple times by now. Walking into Ngannou, good luck. I can't wait for Ngannou to KO Joshua so these boxing fans can get humbled. <laughs> Cejudo said Andy Ruiz is the top three heavyweight. He probably, I mean, back in his, back in the day, like 2019, 2018, Andy Ruiz that was fighting Anthony Joshua was pretty good. He was better than these guys for sure. Damn. I just know Gon beats both of these guys. I know Aspinall beats both of these guys. They got to have them fighting four ounce gloves. I know I've repeated that 20 times, but it would really save the sport. Hop off gone. The reason I'm bringing gone up is because I'm just thinking of a random UFC ranked guy that could beat both of these guys. I'm thinking of a heavyweight in the UFC that could beat them. 
All right. Not all the, I'm not delusional. I know Parker Porter is not beating these guys, but a high level heavyweight with hands in the UFC beats these guys. Gone would dance around them. So it's just an example that I'm bringing up. Aspinall would probably beat him. Ken Robellis? I don't know. Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. We have to see how he does in the UFC. I haven't seen enough of him. Gone 100%. Yeah. I'm a casual? Yeah, for sure. I, I know. Yeah, I'm a boxing casual, and I still know more than the hardcore boxing fans. Crazy. The bloat physique is the most difficult one to fight against. Belly provides massive power protection and pushes people off their hips. I'm sure, man, but that bloat physique gets pieced up by someone that's fast and light on their feet. Gone wouldn't even gone would not get hit by these guys. Gone would probably have a, a closer fight with Parker than he would with Zhang. It's it's a styles make fights situation, right? Gone would have a harder time with Parker, easier time with Zhang. Prime Stipe? Eh, I don't know. Stipe is a little plotty, not going to lie. But Stipe probably does all right, but he, he's a little plotty. MMA Stipe with four-ounce gloves is where it's dangerous, you know, when Stipe's a dog and he also has the, a threat of the takedown and decent low kicks. Stipe had some good calf kicks. Lucas could eat a punch from Zhang if he was bracing for it and had his chin tucked. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I would get rocked, okay? I would get rocked. For real, though, Zang would, Zang would need, like, a, a perfect punch to KO me with. If he lands, like, a regular punch on me, it's 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 definitely going to hurt me. But I'm not getting KO'd by just a regular punch. Now, I probably get KO'd by him. I'm going I'm to be honest. I get KO'd by both of these guys. <laughs> Pavlovich slumps him? Maybe. I could see Pavlovich knocking these dudes out. These boxers have wobblestone, cobblestone knees. No, 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 no. Zhang does not. Zhang has sturdy legs. You could see Zhang's on a, a sturdy foundation. Same thing with Joseph Parker. You, you have to see them wobbling around in order for that to be the case. Thank you for the $2, Marco Vasquez. And I'm getting tired already. I'm getting bored by this fight. Oh, man. I really wanted to see a movie tonight. I wanted to see Dune, too. But it's looking like... We're not going to see it. And I don't have time to see it tomorrow. Damn, that kind of sucks. Maybe. Oh! Joseph Parker knocks out Zhang. Damn, Zhang's a can, dude. I'm joking. <laughs> Zhang knocks him down. Nice shot from Zhang. Nice shot from Zhang. Zhang's really good, man. Honestly, I think Zhang beats Gone. I'm joking. Gon still beats him. You know, maybe Gon loses because he wouldn't be able to hurt him, but still it'd be a very close. Gon would dominate way more than Joseph Parker. Not going to lie. I think Zhang would do well in the UFC after that. I'm joking. Let's hope he puts him away. One more punch. Come on, just land one more punch. Put him out of here, man. Please get it out of here. Oh, come on. No killer instinct. Come on, man. We, we got to have the 90s mentality in there, Zang. What are you doing? Standing in front of him like Nate Diaz and Leon? He's lacking that killer instinct. I got to train with this guy. I, I'm going to get in touch with this team because I think it's a very simple fix. You know, he's got some good fundamentals. He's tough. He's got the power. He's, he's got the he's got the mentality. He just needs a little bit more of that mean mentality. A little bit more of that instinct, you know, the Mamba mentality. That was a nasty shot. That was a great shot. Look at that. He's got the freaking turtle physique. <laughs> Zhang has the freaking tortoise physique. What the heck is that on his head? We are so behind. What do you mean we're behind? Can you oil up for the 300 stream? No. Uh, does anyone have an illegal? No, I don't. I'm watching on the zone. I bought the pay-per-view. Nice jab from Zhang. Nice jab from Zhang. Zhang has no respect for him anymore. Nganu KOs Zhang though. Like, come on. We can't compare Parker Porter to Nganu. Nice. 
You need a clock because I'm behind. Okay, I'll set up the clock. I'll set it up. I'll set it up. Oh, actually. Actually, I would have to hang up my... Uh, I would have to hang up my whatever they're called sound panels. So I don't know if I'm going to do it unless I can smudge the clock right here, but then you're not going to see it. The only other way for me to do it is just to hold it up. Just put a clock overlay up. I can't. I can't. I'm on the YouTube studio. I, I can't do that. I'm watching it live. The best way to be in tune with my stream is just to watch it live, okay? Just refresh the stream when you can. Let me try to refresh it. I can't even refresh it because it's live. Clock overlay, I can't do it. Get a clock. We are on the Chinese sweatshop stream. Sweatshop stream. I have a clock. I just didn't set it up for this one because I thought we were only going to watch the main event and it was going to be like a chill stream. Honestly, Zhang probably... Oh, nice shot from Parker. Yeah, illegal streams are probably behind. You're right. And so if they're behind, there's no way to catch up to me unless you're watching the real thing. Yo, buddy, I remember you saying Zhang is overrated. He is. He's still a fat heavyweight boxer that's plotty. Look at how look at how much he's moving. I still think Gon beats him. I think Francis kicks his ass. You think Zhang's gonna walk down in Ganu? Yeah, man. Of course he KOs in Ganu. Look at him. He's just in front of Parker. Oh wow, he's walking down little Parker. Wow. Parker would have got slumped out in the first 30 seconds against Nganu. Yeah, he landed one little knockdown. All of a sudden he's not overrated. He landed a good shot, not gonna lie, but. Now Parker's taking it to him. Nice uppercut from Parker. There's a big shot from Zhang. <laughs> Little man Parker. Uh, to say this, the start. Okay, I got you. I got you. It's 13 seconds on the clock. 11 seconds. Nice body shots from Parker. Oh, he hit him in the nuts. Okay, the timeout. They're doing a timeout. Zaylee the Blob Zhang annihilates Ganon and Ganu in the same night. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he actually has a Blob physique, dude. Should, should the Blob Co? You know what? I should I should get in touch with the Blob Co, the Blob Company, and actually tell them to reach out to Zhang. I might get a Zhang shirt now. I might get a Zhang Blob Company shirt if I can. I can actually hook him up with a sponsorship. What? Is it when is it airing, Lucas? It's gonna air at like 7 30, most likely. Just say when the round starts, I got you. Thank you for the two dollars. I am gonna get a Zhang shirt. He is perfect for Blob Nation. <laughs> you can't say this is a bad fight. It's not a bad fight. I'm not I never said it was a bad fight. When did I say it was a bad fight? I said that the level of these guys is not on the, the same level as some of the UFC guys. It's fine, though. It's a good fight. He's blob maxing. Call out when the round starts. The 10 seconds the round is going to start. Parker getting it back after the knockdown. Yeah, he's actually doing well now. Best combat sports physique. Super tall, long arms. True. Bloat maxers and short, short and dense. Short and dense is really good. All others after. Yeah, true. Peter Yan is dense. Song is dense too. So it's two density maxers at Bantamweight. Zay Lee, the Marshmallow Man Zhang. Thank you for the $2.99 Australian dollars. We are underway. It's been 17 seconds in this round. 20 seconds, 2 minutes and 40 on the clock. Round 5. No, what channel is it airing on? Oh, oh, DAZN. D-A-Z-N, DAZN. The pay-per-view is $39. I bought the pay-per-view. Just not to take any risk of it cutting out. It's it's a lot cheaper than the UFC ones too. UFC, I remember when the pay per views used to be like forty bucks, man. Does this and thirty five? Does this go the distance? Thank you for the two bucks. No, this is not going the distance. Thank you for the two dollars, Tuco. Don't miss a chance to. Oh, oh, I don't miss a chance to glaze yawn. Why? Because I just mentioned him, and I happen to be a fan of him for sure. 
What should I say about Jan? He's just totally washed. Yeah, man. He's washed. That's just a stupid take. You're not old enough to remember? How old do you think? You think I'm what? Like 10 years old? I remember buying UFC pay-per-views a long time ago, and they were cheaper. I remember splitting it with my friend when they were like 35, 40. They were 40 bucks only like five years ago, brother. Thank you for calling out the round in time. A minute and 22 seconds on the clock. Round five, 120 on the clock. 119, 118, 117, 116. It's probably going to go the distance, actually. <sighs> Y'all tripping Habib versus McGregor was $49.99. Yeah, but that was 2018. And that's actually when they raised it. Forty seconds on the clock. Zhang, the blob, looks like he's gassing out. Wow, what an amazing showcase of skill from Zhang. Yeah, for sure. This guy that, that's moving around at the pace of a sloth, covering one foot every minute, is totally a great, amazing boxer. Most entertaining weight in boxing is 160 pound fights. Not even, man. Not even, dude. I mean, it, maybe it could be close, but I've seen some Canelo fights. I know Canelo fights at around 168 that were so boring. Canelo's last fight was atrocious. I think 135 probably has the best fights in boxing. Yeah, 135. But maybe not, honestly. Who the heck is this? Manny. Manny was the last good boxer. He was the last real boxer. <laughs> Kel Brook. Kel Brook. Who the heck is Kel Brook? UFC 299 was mid besides Tony Pettis. Derek Lewis. Volkov. That was not a mid fight. There were some good fights on there, man. The main card in general was really good. Who else was on the main card? UFC 229. OSP Dominic Reyes wasn't great. Yeah, who else was on the prelims? Yeah, I remember Sergio Pettis for Miga was boring as hell. Luke A. Jalen Turner was good. Scott Holtzman, Alan Patrick was good. That was kind of it, dude. Damn, yeah, you're right. That fight card kind of sucked. But it's a Connor card. What do you expect? Nice. We're round six, two minutes and 38 on the clock. And yes, this fight's no longer good. It's boring. Only round two was fun. Damn, three power punches around. Wow. Yeah, Gon would definitely gas out against that for sure. Damn, Zong is Zhang has only landed three punches around. Typical boxing statement. You would never hear some shit like that in an MMA fight that's a regular fight. This is regular pace for boxing, though. Better BF won't disappoint you. He delivers bangers. Yeah, I will watch him versus Bivol. I am interested in that. Thank you for the 20 and okay. Inue, Inue. What, flyweight? Flyweight in MMA is disappointing. You think I'm going to watch flyweight in boxing? I'm sure his fights are good. I'm sure his fights are good, but still. Thank you for the round time callouts. Do it for Francis. I will. Thank you for the $99. I'm kidding. The, the $2. I read 99 cents first. Thank you for the $2, Jonathan. I'll call it out consistently from now on. I just, you know, this fight's terrible. I just can see Gon dancing around these guys. I could honestly see Volkov beating these guys up. I could see Volkov outboxing these dudes. 
Nah, maybe not Volkov. <laughs> Volkov's kicks are one of his best parts of his game. But I could see Gon beating them. I could see Aspinall beating them. I could see Nganu beating them. Those three guys could definitely beat these two guys, for sure. Damn, this fight's whack. No, Jelton Almeida doesn't outbox them. It's just that the heavyweight division in the UFC sucks too, so I can't name that many people because a lot of them aren't good boxers anyway. I mean, who else is there? What, Curtis Blades? Honestly, Blades would do well. Blades would be in there. Pavlovich too. Pavlovich does well. Pavlovich probably KOs these dudes. Inuit fights are so good. Uh, th th I'm sure they're all right. Rosenstrike? Rosenstrike, maybe. I honestly wouldn't mind Rosenstrike's chances. Stop row boxing is different. Then how come we saw Francis Ngannou beat Tyson Fury? How come Francis Ngannou is going to KO Anthony Joshua tonight? And he's like the sloppiest boxer. And he could hardly touch Cyril Ghosn. Round just ended. Ghosn wouldn't last against Zhang's worst opponent. Gone wouldn't last against Zhang's worst opponent. I know you're joking. That's a horrible take. You think, how does Zhang beat Gone? Just change him, man. Yeah, he's moving around like a slug out there. Gone dances around him, embarrasses him. Opinion on UFC. I think that Gone beats Pavlovich. I think that Gone is probably one of the best heavyweight strikers we've ever seen in general. Just because he got submitted by Jones doesn't make him a bad fighter. He beat Nganu. Let's not forget that. He outstruck him easily. Opinion on the UFC with no time limit. Oh, fuck that. We don't need it. The, the fights are going to stink. If anyone gets a takedown, congrats. Um, no more entertainment for the rest of the fight. For a lot of boring grapplers. Pentoja would be the most boring fighter in human history if that were the case. No, definitely not. I don't want to see it. it. We need some breaks in between rounds. We don't want these guys to gas out too and just have these stalemates. Watch the early UFC fights if you want to know what I'm talking about. There were like 20-minute full guard camping sessions. Lucas C highlights of Inuay. I, I like Inuay. I'm a fan of Inuay. I, I, I do. Don't try to tell me about Inuay. I, I literally have a guy. I, I got the tape. I study his boxing. I study his tape. I've made a couple videos about him. He's my favorite fighter, but you know, I'm not watching his fights. <laughs> oh, I'm, just, I'm sorry about the clock, guys. I'm just not paying attention anymore. This fight's trash. People quickly forget Gone is a world-class striker. Yeah, but he got submitted by Jones. So by their logic, he's just not that great. Gone would annihilate these guys in a boxing match. What would they do? Look at how slow both of these guys are. Look at how plotty they are. Look at their, they're just like standing right in front of each other. This is low level. You wouldn't even see this in a low level UFC fight. You don't even see this in Jamal Pogues versus whoever he fought last. Jamal Pogues would outbox these dudes. <laughs> Jamal Pogues outboxes these dudes. Seriously, Jamal Pogues would be in there. Banging with him. <laughs> Mick Parkin too. Rebellus to Spain would probably flatline. I'm not even joking. I, I'm literally not even joking. Rebellus to Spain flatlines both of these guys in the first round. Same with Nganu. <laughs> this is just... Poetan. Yes, Poetan knocks these dudes out. Poetan sparred with Zhang. Probably KO'd him. <laughs> no, not Usman. Not Mo Usman. Mo Usman is a wrestler. Come on. We, we can't be stupid now. Let's not get crazy. Tui Vasa, no, no, no. Tui Vasa has like a, a regular fight with these guys. Tui Vasa probably loses, but, you know, because Tui Vasa's not that great. He's he's a banger. He's a Sydney banger. The blob? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so, man. I don't think the blob beat. Actually, style-wise, I don't mind his chances. I don't mind the blob's chances stylistically. I mean, what's Zang going to do to him? Walk him down? No one walks down Shamil. Nobody walks down Shamil, brother. 
he has the the style. He he can match Zhang's physique, physicality. The Blob is the biggest heavyweight in MMA. <laughs> he made Rosenstrike look tiny. I've never seen anyone dwarf Rosenstrike. Life is a highway. I want my way on my own. Zhang hits too hard. Really? He hits so hard? How come he hasn't chinned Parker Porter in this fight? It's hit so hard. Why? Because he's 300 pounds? Yeah. If you have to make the weight in the UFC and fight at 265 pounds, he'd have a chinny chin chin. He would get KO'd stiff and he would have less power. Zhang is literally bloat maxing his way to having power. And you're just going to lose against a guy like Francis who doesn't have to do that. You're going to lose to Cyril Gaon, who's just going to be way lighter on his feet and can move around with footwork. You'll probably lose to Jamal Pogues. Jamal Pogues was better than this. I remember his last performance. It was actually kind of nice. Like He had some good hands. He was moving around. Digging to the body. Damn, Zhang can't even beat someone he, he has a 40-pound weight advantage over where they're just throwing hands. Granite Chin Zhang. Did someone tell me that Zhang fought? Oh, nice shot from Porter. Wait, someone someone said that Zhang had a similar style to another MMA fighter that like constantly moves forward. Who is the style you were comparing him to again? DDP? <laughs> You're comparing this guy to DDP? This is the type of pressure that Drickus has, you think? Drickus literally charges people down and throws everything into his shots. This is not a Drickus Duplessis style. He's not even sloppy. Part of Drickus' style is him being sloppy. Waldo Cortez Acosta. That's a good example as well. Waldo Cortez Acosta would move around a lot and actually tee off on these guys. If a fight were to go to decision between Waldo Cortez Acosta and Zhang, I'd pick Waldo Cortez Acosta. I'd pick Andre Orlovsky. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I would pick Andre Orlovsky at this point. Andre is fast. He moves his head around. No one KOs him. He's crafty. Like, you have to be seriously powerful and seriously crafty to land a big bomb on Andre Orlovsky. There's a nice knockdown for Zhang. Now, now you got to take it back. He knocked down Porter twice, man. Now you got to take it back. Andre Orlovsky would have a good chance to hang in there for a little bit. Not even joking. Make a reaction to the Inua fight. Inua fight? Oh, you mean live stream for it? I'm not that big of a fan. He's my favorite fighter. Don't get me wrong. I love his fights, and I, I'm a big fan of him, but I just don't really want to watch him fight. I'm just, I'm just not that bothered by boxing, to be honest. Only the biggest boxing matches that are getting hype that may have an MMA fighter involved like we have tonight. I want it my way. I want a highway home, my own. I'm joking. I'm not a big Inuit fan. I genuinely think Zhang would beat Poetan in the cage with the size advantage. Stop. In a cage? You mean in MMA? You, you don't think he would get kicked to shreds? Are you kidding me? Stop. Don't be silly. Poetan probably knocks him out with a big left hook. Damn, nice shots for Porter. This fight is atrocious. I want it my way. I want a highway on my own. Trevor Peak chins both? No, definitely not. Thank you for the two bucks. I'm a big fan of Trevor Peak, but I do disagree with that. You don't think it's cool how much damage he does with tiny shots? I mean, it is, but... I'm just saying he's overrated. That's all I'm saying. And it, it, this is a boring fight. The two little knockdowns does not make it a good fight. Okay? We're like eight rounds deep. And people were hyping up Zhang like he's some monstrous killer in this division. He's 300 pounds. Of course, he's going to have some pop. Thank you for the five bucks. Zhang's leg would shatter with the first low kick. Yeah, he would lose with the first kick. Thank you for the five bucks, Weary Traveler. I do think Tyson Fury probably beats uh poeton though in a cage fight just because of the length he'd be able to kick it range 
<laughs> I do think Tyson Fury would be Tyson Fury was hitting Ngannou with elbows, outboxing Ngannou, where Ngannou doesn't have to worry about grappling. So there's that. Tyson Fury, I, say what you want about boxing. Tyson Fury is probably the best heavyweight fighter in general, regardless of the sport. I'm joking. Uh, bro, is this fight a joke? It seems like it. It honestly seems like it. Is that Ali Abdelaziz in the crowd? Big guy had way more potential as a promising young sumo wrestler. He'd probably be better. No, I'm joking. He, he found his sport. He found boxing when it was dying and everyone was going over to MMA. And he's fighting light heavyweights. Parker is literally the size of a light heavyweight. Make a reaction. Why do you want me to react to NUA highlights? I, I, I'll probably be like, damn, nice highlights. I mean, uh, I'm not that big into boxing. <sighs> Mike Tyson beats John Jones in a street fight. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have a chance. You wouldn't get close to Jones. Jones would knee him in the face. Jones would get a hold of Mike Tyson in the clinch where Mike Tyson doesn't know how to solve a collar tie. And Jones probably KOs him in the clinch. Jones would, worst take, Jones would get a hold of Mike Tyson, he would get a collar tie, and he would fuck him up. He would fuck his world up in there. What's Mike Tyson going to do? How do you think he knows how to get out of that? No. What, what do you think he's going to knock Jones out like this? You think he's going to have the ability to KO Jones like this? I don't think so. Mike Tyson needs to get in on the side of Jones, bob and weave. Good luck doing that. Good luck taking a calf kick. And good luck solving a takedown threat. Good luck with that. What? Let me guess. No, Tyson just KOs him. Oh, really? How come a lot of Mike Tyson's KOs didn't come in the first exchange? How come he just KO'd a bunch of taxi drivers and also the, the first few punches he would land wouldn't knock people out? Tyson was not just KOing guys with the first punch every time. Okay? Tyson had a lot of power. He had some good power. Didn't have Nganu power. Doesn't matter. You don't need Nganu power to be dangerous. He had a lot of power. He could KO guys. He's not knocking out Jones with the first fucking punch. That happens maybe, I don't know, 5% of the time. 95% of the time, John Jones gets a hold of him, takes him down and submits him or just TKOs him on the ground, does whatever he wants to him. You think Mike Tyson's going to be able to stop a takedown? There's no chance. Literally no chance. The crazy, <laughs> the crazy Hawaiian would actually do really well. The crazy Hawaiian would do really well. I'm not going to lie. The crazy Hawaiian, I've said this before, power slap champion, puts a respect on his name, of course. But the crazy Hawaiian, in my opinion, would probably get ranked in the UFC. I'm not even joking. I could see him having a very Mark Hunt type of career. I think he beats Waldo Cortez Acosta. I think he beats Parker Porter. I'm not even joking. The crazy... <laughs> I'm not even joking. The crazy Hawaiian would literally beat some heavyweights like would do you guys at least agree with that some heavyweights the crazy hawaiian would get in on close range and beat them up all he has to do is learn a little bit of takedown defense he knocks people out i guarantee it bro would need to cut 200 pounds to make heavyweight yeah <laughs> that's why he would do well he'd be a monster he'd, he'd be doing monster mash in the cage he'd be Committing crimes out there. Crazy Hawaiian versus the Blob. I mean, obviously, Shamil Gaziev is a nasty grappler. We know that. So I would go with the Blob. But against, like, the worst heavyweights, the power slap heavyweight champion would probably beat a couple of them by KO. Not even going to fuck around and pretend that that's not the case. The only argument against that is the grappling. But, I mean, what? These horrible heavyweights already have no grappling and no skills, and they make it to the UFC anyway. You don't think the crazy Hawaiian with his naturally gifted power, you don't think he could learn a little bit of takedown defense? Of course he could. Dude, being a heavyweight boxer, at the, being a professional heavyweight boxer, being a professional heavyweight MMA fighter is one of the easiest professional athletic jobs you can get. I'm not even kidding. 
What sport is it harder to become a pro in? I can't give me a couple. I mean, what sport is it easier to become a pro in? My bad. Easier. It's real tough to become a professional MMA fighter in the UFC at like 155 pounds. Still doable. You're not necessarily going to make the rankings, but it is doable. Heavyweight? Oh my goodness, man. You have the build? I mean, you don't even need to be genetically gifted. You just have to be fat, train a little bit. You'll make it to the UFC as long as you have an okay chin. But the thing is, you'll never be champ. It's hard. It is hard to be a champ at the highest level in any division. Because eventually you'll have to fight someone like Aspinall or Gone, someone that's actually good. <laughs> All jokes aside, Guru, Guru, if he actually consistently trained, could probably make it. Yeah. Like if he consistently trained for two years, he, he'd be in the UFC. Shamil would not. And honestly, he'd probably be there before because. Just by watching the sport and like, I don't know. Some of these heavyweights are just atrocious. It's kind of crazy how they even make it to the UFC. And they don't even have any power. Some of these guys are just fat. I mean, there are some heavyweights that have fought on the contender series that are actually just obese. Like, they're not athletic. They're obese. And I, I don't understand how they even get there. And I was watching this Fury fight earlier. One of Tyson Fury's cousins. I'm a better boxer than him. I am a better boxer than him. He'd probably beat me up because obviously he's like, you know, he's tough and he's a big dude. But skill-wise, I got better hands than him. That's crazy. That guy's been training boxing his whole life probably. You at heavyweight versus an average fat heavyweight? Me at heavyweight would be like some of the guys you've seen on the contender series. <laughs> me at heavyweight would be like, you know, your typical out-of-shape fat heavyweight. So essentially, I have a decent chance to beat them. I probably have a better chance to beat some of these guys because I actually have a good fight IQ and I would have decent skill. I would actually, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I could be a heavyweight in the UFC. <laughs> I could literally make the heavyweight division. I, I swear to God. I've been, dude, at 16, I was like 206 pounds. At 16, I was 206. I could, if I could get to 206 at 16, I could get to like 220 or 225 at my age right now. I, I swear to God, I could literally be a UFC heavyweight with my skill. I might actually, yo, I might actually do it. I literally might bloat max. I might literally just bloat max to fight the biggest bums in the heavyweight division, and I might just beat all of them. I, I'm not even, holy shit, holy shit. I could, I just realized like I could make it to the UFC. <laughs> That's insane. That is insane. The fact that I, <laughs> the fact that I could make it to the UFC through the heavyweight division because of how shit it is. Chris Barnett would no, Chris Barnett is, is a good fighter. Chris Barnett is actually better than a bunch of heavyweights, but holy fuck. My skill, my speed, just bloat maxing, I'd be like DC at a low level. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd literally be like DC, but the, the difference is DC is naturally like a big dude in general, but he's a champ. So that's, and he's actually dedicated, right? Imagine DC was like, <laughs> imagine DC wasn't dedicated. He'd still be like a 10. He'd be like the number nine ranked guy if he wasn't dedicated, but he was champ. Now imagine me who, who is like, you know, DC stature, but not naturally a heavyweight size. I, I could at least make it. I could make it to the UFC. Holy fuck. That's crazy. That's how bad heavyweight division is. I could I get out box. <laughs> I could literally out box people that Zhang has beat. I actually could like, it's crazy, dude. All I have to do is this is, this is what I would do. All I have to do is eat five meals a day, go back on the diet that I was doing when I was 16, which is like, you know, typical meal, ground beef and mac and cheese, frozen pizza, steak and rice, you know, toast and butter and, and eggs, sandwiches for lunch with cookies. All I have to do is eat five tasty. I would have Chipotle all the time. All, all I have to do is eat five tasty meals a day, big, heavy meals, and just lift tons of weights, get big, 
and ha- and just hit pads on the side, go to the gym, spar, do a little four days a week MMA training, I'll make it to the UFC. Get literally three years, three years of bloat maxing, lifting. I'll literally make it to the UFC. I'm not even kidding. I'm literally not even joking. In, in the heavyweight division, I, not light heavyweight, but heavyweight. <laughs> the funniest thing is it would be easier for me to be a UFC heavyweight than it would for me to be a UFC lightweight. Because at lightweight, it, it, you actually have to be good to make it to the UFC. All I have to do is train and have like a lighter man's start. You know what? It's like a reverse Volkanovski. Volkanovski was was like had a strength advantage because he was coming down. I'm going to have the skill advantage because I'm moving up. You might say that's false. Oh, you're short? Yeah, you can be a heavyweight and be short. Fucking Daniel Cormier was a champ. Literal fucking champ. Okay? I'm not saying I'd be champ. I'm saying I could make it to the UFC as a heavyweight. (laughs) I literally could, dude. If you are a bot... Dude, the easiest way to become a UFC fighter at heavyweight is just start lifting and bloat max while you lift and just pick up MMA on the side. You'll make it to the UFC. All flatline dudes. (laughs) Nah. Dude, you're not DC. You could keep spamming it. I know. I, that's why I'm saying I wouldn't make it to the championship level or the rankings ever. I wouldn't make it past a Jamal Pogues probably, but I would make it. Okay. I would make it. All right. There are guys on the Dana White contender. All right. Wait, wait, wait. I'll show you a guy. Villa, uh, uh, Dana White contender series. I think there's a guy named like Villanueva that fought on the contender series. There was one extremely fat heavyweight that fought on the contender series that, that actually like, you know, he lost, but still I would beat him. I would beat him. You would beat Dawkus. Dude, you guys realize Chris Dawkus as a featherweight made it to the UFC. Maybe. Okay. I'm exaggerating when I say featherweight. Chris Stockis could literally make it to the lightweight division if he cleaned up his diet and actually took his career seriously. He could literally be a lightweight. He'd be a big lightweight. Welterweight, he would fit right in at welterweight. At middleweight, Chris Stockis, no, 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 no. Chris Stockis at middleweight is too small. He's too small for middleweight. I'm not even joking. I'm literally not even joking. I know how I know the body types way better than most people. Like I, I have a very good idea at where someone will be lean based on their current look and Chris Dawkins' look, he's not going to be shredded until he's in the 170-pound weight class. Sorry. And everyone in the, everyone in the top 10 is shredded. So um, let's look at Fat Dana White Contender Series. Who is the guy? There's One of you guys must know. One of you guys must know. You're not Barnett either? I don't give a fuck. Josh Barnett was a ranked heavyweight. He was a good heavyweight. I'm not saying I'd be good. I'm saying I could make it to the UFC at heavyweight. <laughs> oh. you, you might disagree with that. I'm not even joking. Like People don't understand how actually reasonable it is. If you lift and bloat max, you can be a UFC heavyweight. No matter how small you are. <laughs> you could be like... If you are a natural, dude, there are literally featherweights and lightweights competing in the heavyweight division today. Lightweight, Mick Park. Mick Parkin could, should probably compete, be competing at 170. Yeah, I would lose to him. Mick Parkin beat Jamal Pogues. So there's that. So I, I agree. I'd lose to him, but I would at least make it. I would get in front of him. <laughs> I would stare down with him. I'd be at a UFC Apex event. Okay, can someone put me on to who that fat heavyweight was on the contender series? There was a guy that that, uh, the, that was the most out of shape fighter, Ike Villanueva. Okay, yeah, 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 Ike Villanueva. No, it's not Villanueva. It's it's someone that it's not Villanueva. There was someone else on the contender series that didn't make it to the UFC that competed this past season that was the most out of shape person I've ever seen fighting at a high level like that. Uh, Mike, I'm not reading that. You're not getting me on that, brother. Chandler Cole? 
Is that his name? Yes! It was Chandler Cole. <laughs> Look up Chandler Cole. Look up Chandler Cole and tell me that this dude would not make it into the fucking... Or, or tell me that I couldn't make it to the UFC. You're telling me Chandler Cole can fight on the Contender Series, but I wouldn't make it to the UFC? Stop. Chandler Cole would be a... Chandler Cole, how tall is he? He's 5'10". Chandler Cole is literally a bantamweight. Sorry. No, I don't know. I don't care if he's big boned. He has he, this dude literally has like a hundred pounds of fat on him. How heavy is he? Two sixty one. So, so in order for him to be lean, he'd be like one sixty, and then he would go on a weight cut. He'd fight in the one hundred and forty five pound weight class. He'd literally be a featherweight. Damn, I could make it to the UFC at the heavyweight division. That's nuts. I'm gonna check his record. Ten and zero, damn. Yeah, he lost to Thomas Peterson. Yeah, exactly. Like I think I could at least make it to the UFC. I would be better than Chandler Cole. Shamil the Blam Gazia, Shamil the Blam Gazia. LeBron could be a ranked heavyweight too. One year of training, LeBron is a ranked heavyweight. I agree. Top ten. Doesn't become champ, but top 10. He's not even 5'10". He has a photo with Volk on IG. Really? Shamil the blind guy. Shamil the blind guy. Yeah, he's not even 5'10". This boxing fight sucks. LeBron is 40, dude. Yeah, you don't think he could beat a bunch of unranked heavyweights that are completely out of shape and are horrible athletes that are not even good in MMA, that are literal featherweights. This boxing fight stinks. Well, thank goodness it's over. If y'all could all do it, do it. Yeah, but you don't understand Omar. Like, not everyone wants to be a fighter. Not everyone wants to be a fighter. It's not just like, oh, I could do it, so I, therefore I will. We could do a lot of things for a job that we won't end up doing because we just don't want to do it. I, I could be a, I could make a YouTube channel on, on I don't know. I could do like a, a painting YouTube channel. Does that mean I'm going to do it? No. I don't want to. Y'all couldn't win an amateur fight where people look trash? <laughs> sure. I think you overestimate how good people actually are, Omar. You overestimate how good people actually are. Uh, like, Omar, you do realize heavyweights are the worst you could possibly imagine. Like, I'm listen, listen, listen. When I say heavyweight, it would be harder for me to be a UFC. I would have to dedicate my life to, de to get into the UFC and take it serious to make it as a featherweight or a lightweight. I would have to dedicate like five years minimum to even have an opportunity to get on the contender series, right? Heavyweight? Oh my goodness, it's way easier. Even for someone like me. I've considered fighting at heavyweight because they do suck. <laughs> there you go. But y'all suck worse. I actually have training experience and I have a good amount of muscle and all I need to do is bloat max, lift a ton of weights. All I know is this. All I know is this. I've been 206 pounds. Imagine, because now I'm a lot, I'm a lot muscle-wise, I have way more muscle than I had when I was 206. I've just put a lot of muscle on just because I'm not the same weight. Because I was relatively new to lifting. I could get to 225. I would bloat max 100%. I could get to 225. If I could get to 225, I could probably fight at heavyweight. I could probably beat a bunch of fat heavyweights. Because I'd have the lighter man speed, the lighter man skill set. That's all I'm saying. Smell the blob you. Smell the blob you. How much do you bench? Not a lot right now. I mean, in my heyday, in my prime, I was putting up 225 for, for a couple good ones. I, I, I was banging out 225 for sets of two. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was doing 275 for sets of five. All right, not sets, not repeated sets. I was never a big bencher. I was always a big squat guy. That was my best uh, exercise, the squat. I didn't deadlift. I did the barbell row 
my big three was the squat, the barbell row, and the dumbbell press. The bench, I did bench too. But I was never a good bencher. I just don't have a really wide structure. I, I don't have a, a wide clavicle, wide clavicles. And so that's kind of like necessary if you want to have a big bench. But for squat, that was always my best exercise. And I was able to do 315 for 15 reps. And I wasn't even to ultimate failure. I could have done 405 for multiple reps. I never tried it. But if you can do 315 for 15, you could do 405 for a few. 100%. Front squat, I think I was doing 305 for some good solid reps, which is pretty good. Front squat, 315 is pretty low. Yeah, but for 15 is pretty decent. 15 reps is pretty decent for someone of my body weight. You also have to take into account body weight. If you're like well over 200 pounds, yeah, it's not crazy. But if you're 185, if you're like 180, repping 315 for 15, that's pretty good. That is pretty solid. Zhang did all the damage, marged Parker. Oh, did Parker win? Yep, I guess he got it done. Good for Parker. New Zealand has a ton of good fighters. Look, this guy that's taking selfies could make it to the UFC. Zhang was a real winner. Jacob, I, I think I just saw you. I was just saying, it's actually easy for people to bloat max. If if you have muscle, you could just bloat max your way into the heavyweight division. You could literally be a UFC heavyweight within one year. I'm not even joking. One year, you could be a UFC heavyweight. All you have to do is bloat max and, and do some MMA training. You probably beat a bunch of the guys on the regional scene. It, it might take a couple of years for me to do it, but I, I guarantee you, if there are some heavyweights that fight in the contender series that are literally as, a, as out of shape as you could possibly get, imagine what you could do if you start with uh, muscle and some speed. If you actually have have some good speed, you could do it. But like the thing is, who would want to dedicate a, a portion of their life to being a shitty heavyweight in a division that's not even theirs, where they're never actually going to get far? That's that's really what it's about. Like, who would want that? And then it's well, if you actually want to get far, you should fight in a division that's similar to your actual natural weight, and it's a lot harder. It's fun, yeah, it's fun, but you know is it really though i mean it's just gonna waste time it is fun but it would waste time because you know you're not gonna get far it's just to prove a point point. <laughs> and also you have to bloat like for me i would have to bloat max if you're decent you don't take a lot of damage true that is true also like the whole bloat maxing thing it actually takes work to eat five six meals a day that actually is kind of rough doing it consistently I don't really know if I want to do that. And then I basically have to just dedicate my whole life to training. Lifting would be huge. I can't become a heavyweight unless I get really big, put on a lot of muscle too. Have you seen Inoue fight? No, I've not watched a live Inoue fight, but I've seen some of his KOs and I've seen some of his highlights. Bro, you keep asking about Inoue. I know who Inoue is. I know he's one of the best boxers on the planet. I know he's skilled. I just have, I don't really watch a lot of boxing, to be honest. You'd cut years off of your life with that strategy? Yeah, I would be really unhealthy bloat maxing. That's another thing. DC said Sean O'Malley's a bigger star than DP. Dustin Poirier? Yeah, he's not. Dustin Poirier is a bigger star than O'Malley. It really does make me cringe when you're listening to the weighing in show with Sanko and DC and Sanko saying, man, that walkout song of O'Malley, it really just encapsulates his whole career man he's just a superstar right no he's not dp doesn't even try he's literally only a guy that 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 is popular because of his fight style like he never has tried to market himself that crazy yeah he's had some good fights with connor and some other big fights but dp with the dry personality is a bigger star than o'malley because he's just a ufc legend at this point and I actually want O'Malley to be a star. Like, I want him to do well. I want him to be a star. It's just, it's, it's, it's not living up. When he knocked out Eddie Wineland, I've said this before. I honestly feel like he peaked after KOing Eddie Wineland. That was when there weren't any fans at the events, and it was really cool. And every fight, every like 
hyped up fight seems like a massive deal at the time but that was O'Malley's big coming out party as a really really well-known guy because when he knocked out Quinones hardcore fans knew him semi fans knew him but everyone kind of knew O'Malley after the Wineland fight every guy that watched MMA even if you weren't a hardcore fan you probably knew O'Malley at that point and I think he's kind of plummeted a little bit. And now since he's champ, he's a little bit bigger. But back at the Wineland fight, no one really disliked him. Everyone liked O'Malley. People wanted to see him lose, but no one really disliked him. And we all assumed he was going to be massive when he won the belt. And it's just not as crazy as I thought it. Could you have fought the blob? I could have, but I would have lost. I mean, Shamil's still a massive person. He still is a big dude, even though he, he should be fighting at 205. Do you think Manel Cap will be champ? No, I do not. I do not think he'll be champ. He's had a ton of really close fights with guys that I, I think Pantoja would blow by. Pantoja beat him as well. I mean, I, I just don't think he will. I mean, that, having a really close fight with Felipe Dos Santos after we saw how bad Felipe Dos Santos looked in his last outing, even though I think he beat Mateus Nicolau losing to him the first time, even having a fight that was that close, I, I don't think he's going to be champ. I don't think he's well-rounded enough. It wasn't that close? Yeah, but come on, man. Felipe Dos Santos looked like crap in his last one. If boxers started throwing more, it would be entertaining. True. That's why they should have four-ounce gloves so they don't get as tired. And so they hit each other a little bit easier. And as I said, I honestly think that would make the sport a little bit safer as far as brain damage goes. There'd be a little bit... Uh, there'd be more KOs. There'd be more KOs. Honestly, I think you should be able to have follow-up shots to the ground. I honestly think that'd be good for boxing. <laughs> if you knock someone down, I think you should be able to follow up. But I get it. It, it. You know, we wouldn't have great wars like we had with uh, guys like Fury and Deontay Wilder. We wouldn't have had the Fury waking up moment. So I, I, I do think that that wouldn't be a great idea. But still, four-ounce gloves is where it's at. With four-ounce gloves, honestly, Wilder is probably even better. That's MMA without grappling, brother. I know, I know, I know. I do think that there should be a 10 count in boxing. So it would totally change the game. And one of the good parts about boxing is the knockdowns and seeing people get up and how they do afterwards. Is sobriety overrated and underrated? Sobriety is, it's not about it. It's a good thing. It's good that you, people should be sober. Yeah. Is it underrated? I mean, I think everyone knows that being sober in general is good. So I wouldn't say it's underrated. It's definitely not overrated. Thank you for the two bucks. Have you ever done kickboxing? Yes, I have. Two years. Jake Collier was somewhat skilled and went from middleweight to heavyweight and everyone knows what happened to him. Jake Collier? Yeah, but he at least won a bunch of fights. He at least did okay. When's the last time you drank? New Year's. So, about three months. Is it overrated? Just ask an addict. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's overrated, dude. Sobriety's overrated, man. Do you make a living off of YouTube? Yes, this is uh, this is what I do for. This is mainly it, man. Uh, the cookbook sales, though they exist. You know, the lifting program sales are a part of it, but it's mostly YouTube. Lucas was going to drink if Volk got the win over Ilya. I honestly was going to consider it. Yeah. I mean, life would have been amazing. Smell the blomp, yeah, yeah. Smell the blomp, yeah, yeah. The only people who buy boxing pay-per-views anymore are third worlders. I bought the pay-per-view. And I don't mind supporting this card. You know, this is good business. This is great promotion. 
There's no dead time. I, I love supporting a good business model. I mean, I do feel like I was scammed, but at the end of the day, this is my job. So buying a pay-per-view is, you know, it's actually just a business expense. How do you think Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul goes? Oh my goodness. Mike Tyson's going to slay Jake Paul. He's a Disney kid. <laughs> uh, I'd go with Jake Paul by body shots they have a gentleman's agreement and waste everyone's, everyone's time. Voice of an angel. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the two bucks. I think I should do a musical, guys. I think I should do a musical. <clears throat> Can you write off buying pay-per-views as a business expense? Yes, of course. Plus, I, I just don't want my stream to cut out. I don't want it to cut out. And for the UFC, brother, like, I love the UFC. I, I don't mind paying for the events. Especially when, like, this is what I do for a living. And I just hate when, like, I've, I used to stream and I, I hated when my, it would cut out. I've told you guys about it before, but... I've missed a bunch of cool moments. I almost missed the Nganu Stipe KO. My stream cut out in the beginning of the second round, and I got back in before, right before the first knockdown. I missed the knockdown with Colby and Jorge. I, I missed Colby taking a knee for the first responders. Shamil Ghazia versus Muhammad Usman, who do you pick? Gaziev. I pick Gaziev. Gaziev is a good chin. Listen, I know Muhammad Usman knocked out a guy that should have been fighting at middleweight, but Gaziev actually does have a respectable chin. He's going to be way bigger than Muhammad Usman. He's, he's going to tower over him. And I don't see Usman taking down the blob. <laughs> so I go with Shamil by KO. I, I go with Shamil by whatever he wants. Usman is ripped? No, not Kamaru, dude. Muhammad Usman. He's not ripped at all. Will you use the timer for the Ngannou fight? Probably not. I got him by a vicious grin. Yeah, I, 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 think, I do think that Usman might wilt to the uh, intensity of the blob. Mo Usman is bloat. No, he's not bloat maxed. Let, let, let's look at Mo Usman. I'll tell you what division he should be fighting in. He should be fighting at 205. He should be fighting at 205, man. I think he might be on some sauce. And now let's let's look at Shamil Gaziev. Shamil Gaziev is legitimately one of the scariest fighters. Dude, there's a photo of Shamil mogging Gone. And Gone, we know, is a big heavyweight too. So Shamil's a legit... I honestly don't think Shamil could make any other weight class. I'm joking. He could probably make light heavyweight, but he is a big heavyweight. Yeah, man. I'm rooting for Shamil. Three-rounder Shamil beats Mo Usman. Yeah. I think he KOs him. I mean, people are forgetting Shamil actually has power. It's just... It's different when you're in front of Rosenstrike, who it was a high-level kickboxer and... Rosenstrike is actually a good striker in the heavyweight division. Like, he's legit. He's not the best, but he is legit. Gone couldn't put him away. Francis couldn't put him away. If Francis can't put away Rosenstrike, then I think Shamil will probably at least be able to... Because, you know, Francis didn't have a good gas tank, and Francis gassed out a little bit in that fight. I think that Shamil Gaziev probably gets rid of him on the cage. <laughs> I'm joking. I know Francis KO'd him in the first. Uh, so Nganu is an elite striker. Yeah, Nganu is literally an elite striker. Maybe not skill-wise, but like, I mean, to be honest, like, I think skill-wise he is. Technique-wise he's not. Technically, he's not amazing. But skills, uh, power is a part of someone's skill set. Durability is a part of skill set. Expect a one-hour ad and a one-hour ring walk? Yeah. 
Bro, those ring walks are so extra. I know. Shamil Gaziev should have been given cans of lard in between rounds. He can gulp them down like Popeyes, eat spinach, and it'll give him energy to keep the pace. Are you allowed to eat in between rounds? That that would be cool. Yeah, I, you got to feed him like Popeye. One hundred percent. You think MVP can make a run for the title? If he has the right matchups, maybe, but you put him up against someone that's actually well rounded, he'll probably lose in the rankings. That is, bro. When did th it wasn't a three hundred conference? It was just three people. They do a Q and A before all the big weigh ins. They did one with Armand, Kayla Harrison, and Alex Pereira. O'Malley is a paper champ, and so is Sterling. Sterling legitimized himself when he beat Jan. And O'Malley is legit because he beat Sterling. So he's not a paper champ. Does Shamil survive the Salt Lake altitude? No, I never want to see him at Salt Lake. I don't want to see anyone fight at Salt Lake. They always have terrible performances. And yeah, we always say, but the head kick, you know, like outside of the head kicks, Salt Lake City fights usually suck. Pereira and Jan, it was a good fight, but it would have been way better if it was not at altitude. It was a little bit sloppy, a little bit slow. A little bit lethargic. It would have been way better in any other location. What else was on that card? Let's look up UFC 291. Derek Lewis versus, yeah, Marcus Ruggieri. That was early. Tony and Bobby was fun, though. Tony and Bobby was fun. There's a lot of first round finishes. Fair enough. Copy lot. Yeah, honestly, there was a bunch of good finishes on that card. I ain't going to hate on that card. Boxing is so boring, but remember Usman's UFC 278 card was kind of rough. Boxing is so boring to me, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just a UFC head. No, you, you just have decent tastes and you're not just being fed shit by boxing all the time. And you're just comparing it to something that's a lot better. Holly home. Holly home. Holly home. Would Tyson Fury beat Shamil in MMA? Probably. Oh, is that Kai Kara France? Dude, look, it's Kai Kara France. <laughs> no way. Kai Kara France is literally getting the red carpet rolled in front of him to meet Tyson Fury and the Sheik. That's amazing. That's amazing. Honestly, I didn't even know that they flew Kai out there like uh, he's a much bigger fan or, or uh, he's a much bigger star than I thought Kai Kara France is actually one of the biggest stars in the UFC <laughs> uh do you think you would have as many subs if it wasn't for your beautiful eyes and smile um do I think do you think you would have as many subscribers uh yes I I do think that I would have no more no less uh, thank you for the five bucks. Weary Traveler. Boxing is like baseball. It's an old head sport that won't change for the better. But baseball doesn't fuck around like this, though. Outside of the seventh inning stretch where they do the national anthem, baseball doesn't mess around like this. Baseball doesn't have an hour in between innings. At least baseball sticks to the point. And baseball, a year ago, changed the rules. They're, they in, they uh, installed new rules where a pitcher is only allowed to take 15 seconds in between pitches, they're trying to speed up the game. Baseball's actually doing things to make the sport better. Boxing doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Here comes Nganu. Jan was almost dying after three rounds at Salt Lake City. I know the fight could have been way better. Dude, why is Nganu looking like he's taking a mean shit? Struggle. I like I like this song. This this fits Nganu, man. God's plan. God's plan. <laughs> God, God's plan. God's plan. Why does the font look like that? Who's that movie? What's that movie where that guy was just breaking stuff? Wreck-It Ralph. Why do they have the Wreck-It Ralph animations? I don't do time I won't. Baseball has been trying to forever to make the game faster. I know. Baseball needs to allow people to take steroids. Okay? Who cares if you take sauce in baseball? The best baseball was played in the fucking 90s. 
best baseball was played in the 90s. Honestly, the 2000s was good too. 2000s was pretty good, but yeah, baseball's dying. They need to allow sauce and they need to allow players to talk shit. It's not just the rules. It's not like people will just get fined, but there's like this culture in baseball where you're not allowed to celebrate or stunt on a pitcher. Otherwise, you're going to get hit by a pitch in your next at bat. Everyone's so soft in baseball. <clears throat> I think Francis KOs him. Seems like Cheeto's gained a lot of popularity lately. Yeah. Yeah, I think Cheeto will be a bigger star than O'Malley if he wins the belt. Here comes AJ. God's plan. Flukas Glazy, who you got? I'm going with Francis. Baseball is way too traditional and it's killing them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They've got to get with the times, man. Did you see Cheeto's Essential video? I did not. I will have to check that out. I, I saw it on my timeline. I saw it on my timeline, but I have not watched it. Cheeto's the type of guy to actually have some interesting essentials. That's not just like bling, you know? Here comes Anthony Joshua. He has dried mango and steak. Nice. Yeah, I heard him talking about how dried mango is one of his go-to snacks. Same. Dried fruit is, is the best thing to eat as a snack. Here comes Anthony Joshua with his uh, UK drill music. I think UK drill music is the most overrated music on the planet, bro. Uh, Michael Buffer is like the diet. Bruce Buffer, true. He doesn't seem like he's as into it. He seems like he's just a, a guy that's showing up for the paycheck. You could tell he doesn't love it like Bruce. Francis is wrestling like O'Malley, true, true trailblazer? Not really. Thank you for the two bucks. UK rap is trash. I mean, there's some decent tracks for sure, but I, people say like, man, UK drill rap, man. It's the best music, man. <laughs> UK drill rap so so much better than American rap. No, it's not. It's not even close. Although most rap these days sucks. Rappers are, are horrible these days. That's going to sound like some old head shit, but it's true. N name me anyone that's making good music these days. Who? Name me, name me a single person. Name me a single person. Can't wait for my boy Taporia to flatline Volk again in October. Yeah, I mean, I'm dreading that. U.S. invented rap? Of course. You're a nostalgia merchant on everything? Give me a single... Oh, Lil Baby? Lil Baby's absolute trash. Kendrick Lamar isn't making music these days, so there's that. NBA Youngboy? Trash. Horrible. Atrocious. Rod Wave? He had his he had his heyday in like 2020. He's, he's done. He's No, 2018 was Rod Wave. He's long gone. No one's making good... Oh, Cardi? Cardi had his heyday. Cardi had his heyday back in like 2018. 2019, Cardi. Travis Scott, horrible. Worst musician ever. Horrible. No soul. Every song sounds the same. He mumbles. His beats suck ass. Yeah, Travis Scott's terrible. Yeet? Yeet is okay, but I mean, I don't listen to him. <laughs> Yeet's, Yeet's better than Travis Scott. Tyler the Creator? Horrible. I don't like Tyler the Creator. <sighs> Tyler, the creator, just sound. Dude, Tyler, the creator just doesn't have a good voice. And I'm not one of these fucking, you know, bucket hat skateboarders. Okay. So I don't like, I don't like his music that much. T-Wood, T-Wood, there you go. <laughs> T-Wood's actually good. I do like T-Wood. Young Thug is good. Young Thug makes decent music, but he doesn't make good music anymore though. Everyone that you're naming, a bunch of them made good songs. Not anymore. No one these days is making good music these days. Mac Miller's passed away. I think a lot of these people just have bad taste in music. Aljo. Aljo has a good rap song. <laughs> T-Wood actually is... Freddie Gibbs is not making music these days. Maybe in the GTA times. Freddie Gibbs, 2010s. Eminem, no. Polo G, no. Polo G? Are you kidding me? 
I've not even I don't even know a single song by him, and I guarantee you he's terrible. Lil Durk, Lil Durk got popular in the late 2010s. He made he made a couple of good songs in the early 2010s, and I guarantee you he makes terrible music. Lil Uzi Vert, he's he doesn't make good music anymore. Fighting out of the blue corner. Lil Yachty, yeah, he, 2014 made a couple of good ones, but that's it. Not anymore. Kanye, honestly, that's it. And even his, I, I tried to listen to a couple of his newest songs. They were horrible. Vanilla Ice, honestly, yep, you're onto it. Vanilla Ice is, is the right answer. I would say my, my, top, my top three rappers right now, the guys that are actually making some good music right now, I got to go with Yellow Wolf, man. I got to go with Yellow Wolf. I got to go with the Flatbush Zombies. And uh, I got to go with T-Wood. Those are the big three. Those guys are really putting on. They, they, they have a different thought process than a lot of these other guys. T-Wood, Yellow Wolf, and Aljo. <laughs> Any update on the staff in Wagate? No, I, I think he, he looked like he had some good energy on the skills. Keon Kimura. <laughs> Keon Kimura, Flatbush Zombies. I remember the Flatbush Zombies. You got to be a totally different mind to be watching and thinking about those guys, you know? No, no, no. My my top three rappers right now that are actually... Okay, remember when it was K-Dot, Kendrick, and J. Cole back in the day? Right now, it's it's T-Wood, and it's Keon Kimura. <laughs> it's T-Wood, it's Keon Kimura, and it's Bryce Mitchell. Those are the best rappers. T <laughs> Wood is so bad, man. <laughs> He's not so shit. But you know, I listen to his music over. I actually would rather listen to Tyron Woodley than fucking Lil Baby. Actually, I'm joking. I, I would rather listen to Lil Baby than, than Woodley. Here we go. This fight's about to start. Thank you for the five bucks. Down under man at work. Volk's walkout song is goaded. It, it's overrated. People say he has the best walkout song. I honestly don't love the song that much. It's it's good, it's good, but I would never listen to that song on my own. I'm gonna be honest. I would never listen to that song like outside of watching a Volk walk out. Most of you guys might disagree, but I think it's an overrated song. Here we go. Fight is about to start. Here we go. Francis and Ganu versus Anthony Joshua. Round one. First round just started. I think Francis is gonna KO Joshua. I'm going to read the super chat in between rounds. Two minutes and 47 seconds on the clock. Let's see if Anthony Joshua can beat Francis. I don't think he's going to beat him. I think Francis KOs him. Boxing is overrated. You guys will see Francis looking massive. Jabbing. Looking confident in front of Joshua, but he's patient. Nice jab to the body from Francis. Anthony Joshua always looking, already looking a little bit skittish. Trying to fight behind that jab, but he know that jab won't work. That jab is not going to keep Francis at bay. You're not knocking out Francis with a jab. And uh, I don't think you'll be able to keep it up for 12 rounds, but we'll see. Fainting at Francis. Francis is not reacting. Good little jab from Francis. Didn't land flush. Francis trying to counter with a nice le left hook. Francis keeps trying to counter Anthony Joshua's body shots with the left hook. Francis lands a big body shot. Big right hand to the body. We heard that one. They clinch, and they get separated. Nice shot from AJ. Good job to the body. Francis looking a lot slower. Looking a lot slower than Anthony Joshua. Nice combo from Francis, but it doesn't land clean. He's looking a little bit slow. Nice jab from Joshua. Joshua's looking fast. Oh, that right hand almost got through to from Francis. He's putting Anthony against the fence. He's pressuring him now. Nice body shot from Joshua. But those right hands to the body just aren't going to do anything. Joshua's going to have to actually land something damaging to the body. Like that, that little right hand, it, it's nice. Oh! He knocks down. First time Francis Ngannou's ever been knocked down. Holy shit. Anthony Joshua knocks down Francis Ngannou. First time he's ever been knocked down. Holy smokes. Damn. He just is became the first guy to ever hurt Francis in a fight. Damn. That speed right there. That speed. Damn. 
That's speed right there. Yeah, this is what was supposed to happen with Fury, huh? Damn. I'm shocked. Always shocking to see someone get dropped that's never been dropped. I am actually really shocked. That's crazy. Francis's aura dwindling after the first round. That's going to give Joshua a lot of confidence, but don't sleep on Nganu. You never know. He's a tough guy. Wow. First round, 10-8 for Anthony Joshua. Thank you for the five bucks. I just watched your UFC 299 prediction video. Please stop. With, what did I say to Glaze Ben Washington Denise other than picking him in the video with, with literally a full card prediction video? What the fuck else am I going to do in that video? Oh, I pick someone I'll automatically I'm glazing? Yeah, get over it. Nice knockdown from Anthony Joshua. Look at that. Damn. Nice. Spaded Francis with the jab. Perfect. That's just nice technique right there. Thank you for the two bucks. Lucas, top three rappers, Eminem, MGK, half of Drake. Okay. No. MGK is not even close. Francis has never got dropped with a jab from boxing gloves. I mean, that wasn't a jab. But AJ's gotten dropped with a jab. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, Francis could still KO him. Round two about to start. And it's round two. Here we go. Round two just started. Anthony Joshua has a massive speed advantage over Francis. Nice jab to the body. And now Francis is going to be really worrying about that right hand. Because Joshua was able to sneak it in easily. He's already made a read on him. And Francis, we picked it up early. Just so much slower. Two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Nice left hook there from Nganu. Nganu's getting close to the left hook. Look, he's gluing that right hand up against his chin. He knows he can't take a. He knows he's got to respect AJ now. I have more respect for Anthony Joshua's power. I didn't think you had that much pop, but I'm a boxing casual. Oh, there's a nice jab from Francis landing on the forehead of Joshua. Nice jab from Francis there. Oh, big right hand for AJ slipping over the jab of Francis, and they clinch. A minute and 48 seconds. Nice jab to the body from Joshua. Nganu with the slow hook. Nganu needs to stay reserved. He can't be letting his hands go. Dude, Francis looks so fucking slow. Nice jab from AJ. Nice jab from Francis. Doubled up on that one. Went to the body with the second, but he's just so slow. Nice jab from AJ. Nice jab from AJ. Francis not even able, not even able to get close to the target. Doubling up is AJ. Oh! Oh! Drops in Ganu again. Damn, we got to see a replay on that. <laughs> Holy crap. Francis is getting fucked up. He's good, though. Don't stop the fight prematurely. Don't stop the fight prematurely. Damn, Francis is just not able to deal with the speed. How? Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! Francis and Ganu is out cold! Whoa! I can't believe it! Holy crap, I've never seen that dude get dropped. He's out cold on the canvas. Anthony Joshua just KO'd Francis, the Predator, and got who stiff. Holy shit. Pillow hands Joshua. My bad, brother. Damn, dude. I thought I thought Francis' chin was going to... Holy crap, the speed. This is what was supposed to happen with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, I, how bad is Tyson Fury or, or how washed was he in that fight? Holy fuck. This is what everyone expected last time.
Damn, Anthony Joshua might be the best heavyweight boxer on the planet because he would beat up Zhang too. Holy crap. He flat... I've never... I've never seen Francis get KO'd. I've, I've never seen him get hurt. Now he's in front of Anthony Pillow Hands Joshua. And he's get, holy shit. I'm, I'm joking when I say Pillow Hands, obviously. Wow. Good for boxing. Good for boxing. Damn, he's still out. Holy shit, Francis is still out cold. Aura lost. Francis just lost his aura. Holy shit. Tyson Fury looks terrible right now. Damn. That is crazy. Oh my. Dude, I cannot believe it. They're giving him. Oh my gosh, they're giving him oxygen. Oh my goodness. Damn. That's the, that's the best KO Anthony Joshua's ever had. Your boy is never getting another match. Well, not this one. Thank you for the 279 Canadian dollars. Secure, I appreciate that. And Ganu is up now. No, he's still out. No, he's on his stool. Where is he? I can't even see him. Damn, that was a nasty KO. Boxing owns MMA. I mean, now we're back to reality, right? Now we're back to, okay, obviously MMA fighters shouldn't go over to boxing now. But Anthony Joshua is a lot better than Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury probably underestimated Ganu. But I just cannot believe how much better Anthony Joshua is than the version of Tyson Fury that showed up. I mean, we really have overrated Fury. How does this affect Jones's legacy? It doesn't at all. Thank you for the two bucks. How, why would it affect his legacy? Dude, he has an oxygen mask. Remember when I said it wouldn't be close? You're right. Thank you for the two bucks. Damn. Dude, Tyson Fury is shocked. Anthony Joshua, this is, this is the Anthony Joshua that we expected. In the Ruiz fight, in the Usyk fight. I mean, listen, how good is how good is Usyk? Holy s boom! That wasn't even the knockout. That wasn't even the knockout. They need to show the KO. AJ versus Fury. Let's make it happen, dude. I've never seen Francis get rocked. See him. Get, see him get laid out cold, dude. Show us the replay, please. That was like the Usman Masvidal KO. Bro, show us the freaking KO. They keep showing the same one. Aura lost. Aura lost. Here it is. That's like the Usman Masvidal KO. Dude. Oh my. He folded him up like Stipe. He folded him up like Francis folded Stipe. Francis fell over backwards. Legs twisted up. Oh my gosh. Dude, that is crazy. Like, seeing someone like Francis Ngannou get knocked out is just shocking to me. That's like Mike Tyson getting KO'd back in the day, but Mike Tyson wasn't even in his prime. Damn. Who else has been KO'd like that in their prime? That's like saying Usman get KO'd, but even crazier, because Francis had, like, a granite chin. I've, we've seen Usman wobbled. And this is after Francis did so well against Fury. Wow. So now we're back to reality. MMA fans, we're back to reality. And Ganu granted chin narrat narrative. Oh my God, stop. Narrative. It wasn't a narrative. A Anthony Joshua just KO'd someone with a granite chin. You, what, have you never watched Francis and Ganu's fights? You just heard people talking about his chin. You, you actually haven't seen him take big punches? It, it wasn't a narrative. That's You're basically taking away Anthony Joshua's uh, KO. You're taking away from his KO. Knocking someone out with a good chin is impressive. Damn. Francis, first time ever gets KO'd. Thank you for the 99 cents. That was nuts. Oh, uh, now they're talking about the foundations and the, you know, it's bad when the, when they're talking. And now that's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. But you know, you know, you just got fucked up when the, they start talking about the foundation. You know, I'll tell them, tell them I'll support his foundation. Damn, that's rough. That is rough. Can't play boxing. Can't play boxing. Can't play fighting in general. Damn. Anthony Joshua doesn't KO anyone like that. It's all right. You're a casual at boxing. This don't count. I mean, I didn't do like a, an official prediction, but I didn't do a video. So I'm all good. But like, you know, I thought Francis was going to win. Damn. I want to see. 
MMA Joey's reaction. MMA Joey's been like uh, the biggest Francis Ngannou fan. Wow. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. We need Ngannou versus Deontay next. No, we need Ngannou in PFL. We need him to take a break. <laughs> Now PFL ain't looking so bad for Nganu fighting this uh, guy that just beat Ryan Bader who's washed. I think Nganu could win that fight. Man. Listen, he's still dangerous. His aura is not totally gone in MMA. It took a dip. His aura in boxing is gone. Like, his aura in boxing is not there. But also, let's let's not pretend that every boxer does this to him. All right, Tyson Fury, we, we, we saw what happened there. Nganu's probably better than he was against Tyson. And Ghana still KOs a bunch of boxers, but Anthony Joshua is definitely the, the best on earth outside of Usyk, of course. Usyk is, dude, Usyk is going to destroy Tyson Fury. Holy crap. Thank you for the two Canadian dollars. It's crazy that Usyk beat this guy. Because Joshua's legit. He just, he totally fucked Nganu up. Two rounds. Just with simple, a simple jab and a right hand. And I'm telling you guys, I could make it into heavyweight box. I'm joking. Thank you for the two Canadian dollars. Now we know the real talent. Okay, sh stop. Yeah, yeah. So this proves one guy beat Francis Ngannou. One guy. And Francis Ngannou was never the most technical dude in, in MMA. The real talent goes to boxing. Talent is a dead sport. MMA might only have like 10 decent heavyweights. Boxing has three. There you go. Next, Jake Paul does that to Mike Tyson. That would be horrible. Bro isn't even Waddle Wally. Otto Wallin level? <clears throat> He's better than Otto Wallin. He would KO Otto Wallin. Keep the same energy for that boxing is dead video. I will. Boxing is totally dead. A Anthony Joshua just saved it in some way, but boxing is still a dying sport, and it, it pales in comparison to the four MMA promotions. I'd rather watch Bellator than boxing, to be honest. This was a good event, though. Um, I'm sorry. This was a good main event. The, the fight, the main fight was good. The whole, the whole rest of the card sucked. The rest of the card sucked. It was like a good 10-minute main fight, but the rest of the card was a waste of time and it was horrible. Damn. I wonder if I wonder if Joshua surprised himself. You guys think he surprised himself? Dane is edging right now. Francis already won, dude. He's already won. He's he's able to get more boxing fights. He still has a rematch with Tyson Fury in the future. He, he's he's going to walk into a title fight in the PFL and get paid millions. He's still winning. But this one is just skill-wise, purely competitive. It's not a good look for him. He did win. He did win in life. I mean, come on, dude. He lost to Anthony Joshua, but... Even getting the Joshua fight after a Fury fight, now he has a Fury fight lined up in the future and he can get another boxing match after this. And he made $20 million tonight and he's going to walk into a title fight in the PFL, which is not a big promotion, but the PFL is paying him a massive bag. Of course he won. Thank you for the five bucks. I guess boxing meat lovers needed a reminder. Randy Couture smoked a boxer in round one. Oh, of course. I mean, this it doesn't mean that boxing is better than MMA. Cyril Gan still goes out there and beats both Parker and Zhang. Gan loses to Joshua, of course, but I mean, Gan kind of schooled in Ganu. Sergey Pavlovich does not beat in Ganu. Sergey Pavlovich is sloppy as hell. You needed to have someone with perfect technique beat him. I don't think they're going to interview Francis. Yusik, Yusik is going to destroy Fury. I can't wait for that fight. How old is Anthony Joshua? Thirty-four. He's not that young, but he's he's prime age. That's like a a, a prime age. Not surprised. I mean, I'm pretty surprised. That he KO'd Nganu like that after Nganu did so well against Fury and Nganu has never been hurt in a fight. It is surprising. It's not surprising that he loses to a boxer. 
But it's surprising that he got KO'd like that after his amazing performance against Fury when Joshua doesn't do that to people. But the skill gap was so tremendous. That's what should have always happened. That just goes to show it doesn't matter how good your chin is if the skill gap is great enough. And if you're in against another heavyweight. That's crazy, dude. So so he said, I just want to fight. I just want to go back. Is that the winner of Fury Usyk? Yes, it is. <laughs> that was a win reaction. Here's my support. Thank you for the two bucks. I got to see my reaction to that. My reaction was great. Never seen Francis O Rock. Same. Lucas Curse is back. I didn't do an official pick on this. The narrative shifts are so crazy. The internet is an insane place. Yeah, the, the narrative shift is going to be Francis sucks the whole time, man. And when in reality, it's like, yeah, he wasn't as good as we thought. But at the same time, he, are we going to just forget what he did to Fury? Like, are we going to forget that he probably beats most heavyweights in boxing right now? Did you watch Zhang versus Joseph Parker? Those guys are trudging in the mud. They look like sloths out there. Gone would destroy those guys. Cyril Gone would give Anthony Joshua a tougher fight. My goodness. And he gets KO'd for sure. But Francis still beat Tyson Fury. Let's not forget. It was a fluke. Oh, yeah, it was 12-round fluke. Absolutely 12-round fluke, man. 12 on fruit fluke. Total fluke for 12 rounds, man. Even for the people who say Fury was off. Fury was off. Fury was a little off. It wasn't his best version, but it's still impressive. It's still impressive. It still is. People expected Fury to TKO Francis. And obviously, nobody that is being honest with themselves can deny that it is impressive that Anthony Joshua flatlined in Ganu flatlined a little knockdown you wobbling around okay we're gonna stop the fight that's one thing tko up against the ropes that's one thing flatlined if you've been watching in ganu's career you have to be impressed you got to be shocked i've never i've never seen him rocked see him get flatlined that's crazy Yusuk is a different level. Oh, of course, Yusuk is a different level. skill in boxing is dead aspinall would aspinall would destroy a bunch of these fat heavyweights Anthony Joshua is just better than I thought. Anthony Joshua is just better than I thought. He's shouting out the Cameroonian people. Okay, are they going to interview Nganu or is Nganu getting... Seeing Francis get folded was strange, I know. No Francis interview? There's going to be some fools that are saying, did he win now? Did he win now? Like, okay. Did he win now though, man? Yeah, he just made $20 million and is still going to fight Tyson Fury and can still fight one of these guys like Zhang or Parker and will walk right into a title fight in the PFL. And you may say, who cares about the PFL? No one. But Francis is getting paid a ton in the PFL. Like the PFL is emptying their wallet for Francis. Flatlining him in round two as well. You just reminded me it was round two. I, I, I would have said round three. You're right. Round two is crazy. Francis fell down exactly like Stipe. Exactly like Stipe. Folding up backwards. Oh my goodness, man. That flat line was crazy. Dude, he needed an oxygen mask. Holy crap. He needed an oxygen mask. Oh my gosh. No way! Oh my gosh, bro. It's like watching a, a tree fall in the forest. I, I could never picture Nganu getting flatlined like that. That's insane. What does it say about Anthony Joshua's... His power is great. I Listen, I, as a boxing casual who doesn't really watch the sport, just has... I've seen Anthony Joshua, like, wobble, fat, Whatever his name is, the guy that beat him back in the day, the, the the I forget his name, Ruiz. I've seen him wobble Ruiz around, but like he never KO'd him stiff. He like TKO'd Otto Wallin, but he never KO'd him stiff. Like to see him KO someone stiff for the first time like this is nuts. First time meaning, I'm sure he's probably KO'd some people way back in the day, but to do it to Francis, 
Of course, the skill gap we know is tremendous. Ruiz is, oh, Ruiz is a real chin. It's not about the fucking chin when it comes to this. Francis has a better chin than a bunch of the people that Anthony Joshua has finished by TKO. It's just that the skill gap was too great. Stipe is such a bum. How did he lose to Bum Ganu? All right, you're just a, you're just trolling with that take. What happened, bro? Francis Ganu knocked out Anthony Joshua. That's what happened, dude. The whole world is coping. I told you Francis was going to get him. I told you he was going to get him out of there. Francis absolutely cannot lose his next MMA match. Yeah, I mean, that would be it. That would really be the nail in the coffin if he loses to this Fajeda guy. But Fajeda is a journeyman. Fajeda is a journeyman who only knocked out a, a, a bum in Ryan Bader who's like 40 years old. So there's that. Francis won't lose to him. And Ganu had an iron chin, had never been rocked before this fight. I know, which is crazy. I just would never expect that. Jones would beat Francis. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not going to say Jones beat Francis just because Joshua KO'd him. I don't, I don't understand how this plays a part on that, but possibly. But again, Francis getting KO'd does not mean that Jones does anything near that to him. I don't think a single person in the UFC could possibly do that to Francis outside of maybe Robellus. <laughs> Robellus to Spain. Stipe could have flatlined him, man. No, no, no. Ruiz put some respect on Ruiz. No, Ruiz is just much more skilled than Francis. Took a dive? No, he didn't take a dive. I don't believe he took a dive. There's no way. It's a different fight just saying in general he beats Francis. He could, but I don't know about after the, the injury. I don't know about after the injury. If Jones takes... I do believe Jones could have taken him down and finished him with ease. But getting to Francis, when Jones comes back, stiff, old... It's going to be difficult. And Francis, we know in MMA gloves, it's just a different issue. This actually broke my heart. I'm not going to lie. He had so much aura going into this fight. I know, dude. So much aura. He lost it. In boxing, at least. he He's lost a lot of his aura. But in MMA, when he fights Fajeda, he's still Francis Ngannou that has the nastiest power on earth, you know? He'll beat Fajeda. And he'll fight Zhang, and he'll fight uh, Parker, he'll fight a bunch of other guys. So Francis is going to make bank, but he's probably going to lose in boxing. But the thing is, the thing is, though, Francis Ngannou losing to the best boxer or the second best boxer right now at heavyweight does not mean that he loses to everyone else. He beat Fury. Maybe not the best version of Fury, but he still beat him. Close fight. Fury at his best probably beats Francis. I I'll give you that for sure. But like... What, you guys think fucking little man Zhang, featherweight Zhang's beating him? Bloat maxed blob Zhang? I don't think so. I don't think Zhang beats Francis. I think, no, he might. He might act actually now, though, now that Francis has been KO'd, Zhang might actually, you know, bring him to the blob realm. <laughs> Shamil Bogaziev probably brings Francis to the blob realm. You think it's just too good? Here, let's hear what Tyson Fury has to say. He has the has in gone his well it, it has today it it did today before today it, it was probably iron now it it's declined he got KO'd that changes him dude you want him to leave boxing him fighting Tyson Fury is not nearly as dangerous even though now that he's got a softened up chin Fury could actually put him away now if he actually shows up at his best I think Fury's going to get destroyed by Usyk. Unless Prime Fury shows up, but he's not in his prime, I don't think, anymore. But Fury was legit back in the day. Boxers would mess up MMA fighters. MMA fighters would kill boxers, true. Is Ngannou's chin gone now? Not necessarily. We have to see how he does in his next fight. Against someone as good as Anthony Joshua, he's screwed. But no one outside of... Usyk is as good as Anthony Joshua, and it's just a different stylistic matchup. Like, Fury will probably beat him in the rematch because Fury will actually show up at his best. But listen. No one else does that to Francis outside of maybe 300-pound Zhang, who, who honestly, honestly, Zhang is plotty as fuck. Zhang is slow compared to Anthony Joshua. Joshua impressed me with his speed. Oh, damn. 
Let's see what Helwani says. Rocked, yeah, crazy. Never seen him get rocked. Anthony Joshua is on the sauce. I don't have proof. I mean, he might be, but so could Francis. Cool, but Joshua doesn't beat Shamil Gaziev. Obviously, not in a, not in a real fight. Do you think Joshua was sauced up? It doesn't matter. Why would it matter? If he was sauced up, so was Francis. Lucas, how far back is your reaction to the KO? I deleted it from the stream because I just I, I wanted to take it down to gatekeep it. I did delete it from the stream already, unfortunately. I'm going to gatekeep it and not show anyone. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when my reaction was. Damn, that is crazy, dude. That is crazy. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get going. I want to do my video. I'll be back. Okay, see ya. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time.